We're live. What's happening, everybody? What's going on, Mr. Dennis? Dennis, first one in tonight. Good to see you, brother. How you doing, man? Been a long, busy week around here, that's for sure. Give John a minute to wrap up and everybody will start rolling in and we'll hang out for a couple hours. I'm going to have to cut it off right at nine tonight. We've got a big job I got to do on a freight liner tomorrow. Me and my buddy are going to do it. Full new exhaust on it, new air dryer, and a whole nine yards. And he's going to be showing up early. So, not going all nighter. Have no fear that Dugster is here. What's going on, brother man? Good to see you. And Junkyard D's in the house. Mohawk. Howdy, howdy. Colleen Tebow's in the house. Did you get your shirts, Colleen? What's happening, Dust Devil Brian? Good to see you, man. Did you get a camera for your computer yet? Or a, or a hub, rather? Hey, Scott. How's it going, man? I was just saying hi to Dennis. I have finally got my 3,000 watch hours, which is cool. What do we got? What's happening, Mr. Thumper? Did you ever get my email about the stencil? I sure I sure did. Um, I haven't forgot you. I've just been stupid busy. But I did get your email. He did get the shirts video soon, right on. Unfinished project is uh, throwing out John Wilburn. Doing what a good moderator does. We appreciate you, brother. Yeah, I'll get it done for you, man. I'm going to have to just draw it up and cut it. Did get a good judge logo though that I can uh, basically use for a stencil to modify. Really good, Tony. Going for the other half of my huge Hastings pick tomorrow. Super stoked. Right on. That's cool. Saw you throw up a video. I did not get a chance to watch it. Tomorrow's going to be a day for that. Well, uh, I have it on the big screen. All the all my catch up videos I need to watch be on the big screen in the shop. Well. Working on that freight liner. Finished per, uh, prefers butterscotch over caramel. I like them both. Can't have much of either, though. Can't have the sugar. I should say shouldn't have the sugar. <laughs> Congrats on the 3K watch hours. Appreciate it, man. Next milestone is going to be 4,000 and 1,000 subs. And only, uh, let's see, I'm at 893 subs now, so I'm 107 subs away. These lives actually usually do pretty good for watch hours. Getting into summertime, I'll be putting out more videos again, and I think I think the other thousand's going to come pretty quick. As long as some of the old stuff don't start falling off on me. Ooh, butterscotch versus caramel. Tough choice, isn't it, though? I do like both. Hey, Turbo Tom. Good to see you, man. Best damn Chrysler tech there is right here. Mr. Turbo Tom, 416. And he's got a pretty cool Ford, too. And there goes the phone. Hang on, let me shut this thing up. Always forget to do that, and it never, never fails to go off on me during the live.
Yeah, a friend of mine arguing with uh, oil change on his Cummins. He tore the, had to tear the damn drain plug out of it. Now he's got to weld him a patch on the pan, I guess. That sucks. Dougster says, my one-year anniversary is coming up next month, and I, will, I believe I will lose all my watch hours. No, you don't lose them all. They will start falling off day by day. So basically, um, you know, let's say, let's say for an easy number, you had a thousand uh, that you got over the last 365 days. If on day one, you got 10 watch hours, then on your 366th day, you'll have 990 watch hours. That's how that works. Evans Mopar Scott says, I'm at 2221 watch hours getting there. Yes, you are. Good job, man. Congrats on that. You've already got the thousand subs, though. Let's see. This project didn't realize small channel with big channel feel. <laughs> Mr. Mopar Dennis says, hard time with content now is supposed to go to the drag strip this weekend, but storm damage at Gateway now. Freezing temperatures all weekend. The track is now closed. Freezing temperatures. Holy crap. Here we are coming into the end of April. Had a U90 recall cancel today. I still need to get mine in for it. What's happening, Mr. Cope? Good to see you, man. Five Dukes was damn funny. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Finishes. JB Weld. Just over Brian says, you just have to keep making content and don't take long breaks like I do. That is correct. You know, I think it keeps this channel is the live streams and they usually go on for hours and hours but that's that's just not going to happen tonight because i've got crap to do tomorrow unfortunately i enjoy hanging out with you guys though colleen saying hi to mr co brian dust devil says i've had four thousand watch hours three different times yeah and then they fall off you got to keep it going Twisted and Dust Devil Garage Windscreen Codependence Community of Mutual Help. <laughs> What's happening, Dean? I actually think I'm about 3,100 watch hours. Let me look again. Yeah, you know, I was actually, you know, kind of trying to get there. And then I just, yeah, figured it'll get there when it gets there. But when I got close, you know, for whatever reason, it was kind of did get a little exciting to see it take off. Dogs out there barking at something. For whatever reason, they like to bark at the stray wild rabbits. I hate them things, and I don't know why. Let's see, what have I got? 3,083 public watch hours in the last 365 days. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's creeping up. Ask for the old O2 sensor. The upstream is a dual zone. It's an expensive little booger. The finished project is Cope. Did you realize that Wilburn has never watched the Blues Brothers? Missing out. Union members don't take long breaks. Dust Devil Garage misinformation. <laughs> My watch hours are in a single numbers. LOL. Dust Devil 
Brian says, I'm feeling better about making videos again. My life should be back soon, I think. That would be cool. I was missing out. That's what I said. So I uh, got my new seats today for the truck from Jegs. Uh, also got a new gas tank for the charger. Unfortunately, the sending unit didn't show up yet. I guess it's going to be here tomorrow. Not like uh, I'm going to have time to screw with it anyways this weekend. And Finnish says, I have watch minutes. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to like these new seats. I haven't taken them out of the box yet, but they're, uh, they're the Jegs branded ones. They hooked me up pretty good on them, and they're supposed to be modeled after the 2010 Challenger seats, but they've got the provisions for the harness, so that's going to be a good thing. Get the seats in, and I will be adding a five-point harness to the truck this year. Dennis has never done a live, been on a few, and even that's been a while. Yeah, it kind of has been a while since you've been on one, huh? Well, Tom says I have 23.2 watch hours. That seems kind of low for your channel. In the last 365 days, Tom? I have his Mopar Scott says after I make a video, I share it on Facebook and share it to Facebook groups. With like content, I think that helps it to get more views. That's possible. A lot of people use Facebook. Get on it every once in a while, but I'm not a huge fan of the platform. Turbo Tom, I'm less than that. 8.8. <laughs> yeah, you do have to, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, I guess you don't get it. They don't give them away, but you got to put in the work to get it. I think mine's actually done real, really well, considering that all I really do is these lives for the last five or six months. And put out a, those couple of Toyota videos and that engine that I built. And those videos actually did pretty good. We're gonna start. We're gonna start seeing more content. I think next week he's supposed to bring it up. I've got a. 67 Ford pickup with a 352 in it that's been sitting for, I think, three, four, or five years. That I need to get freshened up and ready to run. He's going to haul it up for his son. I think it's going up to Wyoming, if I remember right. It's where he said it's going. But I got to whip it into shape before he takes off with it. And, Get some good content out of that. That'll be a cool old truck to work on. So you guys can stay tuned for that. Any of you guys like the old Fords? And of course, uh, I will be filming putting the seats in the truck and probably get a carpet kit and put in the truck and hopefully get the AC going this year, maybe, um, as well as focusing on some rear end upgrades suspension rear suspension upgrades so i can maybe find some traction with that thing yes got to put in work tractor video has not been conducive to watch hours plus i haven't made any long videos just been doing shorts yeah but shorts will get you on the map though shorts do have their place but unfortunately shorts don't give you watch hours Looks like your rant video did awesome. Which one? The one on the alternator? The WTF Powermaster one? Yeah, that video actually did pretty well. Dugster says the Yoda vids were cool. My dad had that pickup. Blue interior eight track player, no inclinometer, 1979. I saw your comment. That was cool. 2025 Ram, 1500 inline six twin turbo was on the lot for one day sold. Wow. 
Wow. That was an expensive piece. I do got to say the new ones are nice, but I have no desire to spend 40, 50, 60, 80,000 dollars on a pickup truck. Too rich for my blood. Twisted, once you get a taste of the fame, you'll take it like a duck to a cinnamon ball or a duck to a cannonball. <laughs> Dean. Unfinished. Price must be talking about that 2025 Ram, I'm assuming. Bet you it wasn't cheap. And finish, put up the link to Dean Stevenson. Uh, the old tax time has gotten to people too. The, you know, the merchandise sales on the website have really slowed down the last couple, three weeks too. Low monthly payments. Yeah, sure. Monthly payments to keep you in debt forever and ever and ever. Well, I don't know, Dean, says Dennis. Finishes no DNA goosed. Slant Daily, what's happening, Shane? Good to see you, man. I will stay with my 2004 Dodge 2500 diesel. That's a good truck. Has that one got the HO in it, Shane? Hang on, guys. She's going to have to bring those dogs in if they won't stay quiet. I'm not that guy that leaves my dogs outside to bark and piss off the neighbors. Which Mopar Dennis says, maybe another video. Training fuel with a rag and a fuel cell would do it. <laughs> Goose. Colleen says, I've got my 03 Mazda MPV. It's my newest vehicle. By the time Vietnam came around, you only wanted more on the artillery. Dougster says, hey to Professor P. No, but it's really not needed. I think it was only like a... 10 or 15 horsepower difference in rating anyway. I was just curious because that was one of the few years they had the HO. I actually didn't like the electronic setup on the HOs. They were problematic. And you can't get any more of the... Um, Oh, I've lost the word I'm looking for. The pedal position sensor for the uh, 04 and 05 HO Cummins. Sorry, EC4. Why did autocorrect do that? Why does autocorrect do anything, Dean? <laughs> it's always screwing me up. Never fails in trying to type out a text or something and it changes it and then you don't see it and it's done sent and then you see it and you feel stupid. At least I do. Late night in the garage changing out the 950 carb to a 1050. Nice.
That cookie monster is going to be a force to be reckoned with this year. Saw that picture you put up in John's life. It was a sexy looking mill. Jack up Tony, a new Ponzi scheme. <laughs> Not surprise me, not even in the least. Weather's getting nice. We're starting to see a lot of people start to work on their stuff and, you know, wanting to get out racing. And then shit happens like the storm at the drag strip and bleachers in the middle of the track ain't ever any good. Weather's just been weird this year. Seems like spring don't want to spring, but finally has here, I think. I don't think we're expecting any more cold shit. It's actually been real nice this week. Spending a lot of time out in the shop and not having to wear a jacket. Just been nice. Well, I think we were like 80 degrees the other day. Trying to get into the six tens before the juice. That'd be awesome. Guys, phone's throwing a fit. Well, that's never any fun, Max Wedge. What's up, Hanlon's Garage? Good to see you. Twist Mopar Dennis is 42 degrees out now. Yikes, that's cold. Shouldn't be that damn cold this time of year. Dugster says, and spray it to 590. You get 610 NA, you can spray it to faster than 590. Max Wedge, it's a poor, work, poor workman that blames his tools. <laughs> 520, that's more like it. He says, I only did 6-8 in the 8th. It was my Mopar's fault. Four in more than one way, right? Pain in the ass when the phone doesn't want to behave itself. Alan's garage says our snow was melted, then we got dumped with three feet. It sucks. Slant Daily Professor P says, Doug, when I get into the fives, it will be radio silence on where I am at in the fives. <laughs> Keeping it close to the vest. That was Mopar saying hey to Hanlon's. Yeah, I'd, um, I know it's capable of it if I can get some traction. I'm really kind of hoping to see least low sevens out of the truck this year but we shall see Got a bunch of work to do the rear yet i think i've pretty much landed on what i want to do with it 
still up in the air whether or not I'm going to go with a brand new replacement factory spring or maybe go to the Caltrack split monoliefs. Really leaning towards the split monoliefs, but they say when you run them, you really can't put nothing in the back of it. Not that I would ever haul much with the thing, you know, it is more of a drag and drive kind of build, but being the fact is I do want to do a lot of street driving with it. I'm not real sure if I want to go with the split monoliefs. It's kind of a big time permanent change. But that with the cow tracks and good double adjustable shock vertical underneath it, I think will help a lot. What's happening, Wendy? Good to see you. Allen's picked up a 2018 F-150 4x4 with a blown 2.7 turbo. Wow, that's a... What is that? That's got to be, a, what, a little V6? Yeah, I figured you meant blown up. I guess if you got it cheap enough, it'd be a good, good fix-it rig. Forty six in West Michigan near Martin one thirty one dragway. Damn. That's even that's cold. It's already dark and late up there where you guys are at, so I guess that makes a little better sense. Max Wedge says I'm putting a bushing kit on trailer suspension. Don't ever want to do another one. Pain in the axle. Oh, I'll bet. Yeah, trailer suspension can sometimes be a pain in the ass. Twin turbo. Wow. Junkyard D. Contact Jim at Racer Brown Cams. Twisted Mopar Dennis says that. Yes, it's V6. Three grand Canadian. I guess you got it cheap enough. What's happening, Dr. Art? Good to see you, man. Appreciate you stopping in. And we got Big Block 402 with that badass candy cane stopping in to say, hey, and that engine sure is looking good, man. Can't wait to see that sucker take a rip down the track. Junkyard D says, thanks, Twisted, but how long do they take? Just made my first test ride today with the 481. <laughs> <laughs> oh my get in sit down shut up and hang on kind of deal huh i buy dr art just a moment dennis says it was quick it could change Anlin says twenty seven thousand dollar book value here it's a loaded lariat how bad's the engine blown? Have you got it out yet? Something you can rebuild, or you're going to have to get a whole new one. Or a different one, rather. Unfinished, throwing up Big Block 402, Stevens Channel. Pauline says, I'm out. Everyone have a great weekend. You do the same. Thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> Dean's throwing up a link. Steven says, Big Block 402 shredded the alternator belt. I'll have to put my electric water pump on it. Damn it, boy. Got Mohawk in the house. What's happening there, brother? How's that scamp doing? Got it out and playing with it yet this year? Uh, 
Hanlon's has an engine coming for it. It should be here Monday or Tuesday. 3,500 with 141,000 kilometers on a complete drop in. Damn. You might have just got yourself a decent little pickup for cheap. It's always good when you can get a good score like that. Granted, it's going to be a bunch of work to put it in, but still, sounds like a pretty damn good deal to me. Yep, it's like instant red line when you hit it. Nice. Ford wants $27,000 to install an engine in it. Wow. Including the engine, or is that just labor? That's insane. You know, back in... Uh, 2017, I think it was, I had to replace the 6.7 diesel in a 2015 Dually Ford. And that was, that engine got blown up by a guy that had no business with a tuner. But either way, I ended up charging him 15 grand. It was a lot of work. I bought a brand new engine from Ford. Of course, that 15 grand included the new engine. Bought a brand new long block from Ford. I paid, shit, what I pay for that? I think it was $8,500 I had to pay for that engine. And then the parts guy tried to renege on the price because he told me he screwed up. I said, dude. I already got a check from the customer. I ain't. I can't jack the price up now. You're going to sell it to me for what you said you were. You're going to stick it up your ass. And well, I'm going to get fired, he says. Well, that's not my problem. You should learn how to do your job. Long story short, he ended up selling me the engine for the quoted price, but he wasn't happy about it. Hell, it wasn't my fault he messed up. I already done quoted the customer. How do you go back and tell a customer, you know, $15,000 bills, now $17,000? They don't take that too well. When finished his handlings, when you're done, you'll know why. Right? I'm retired and I have more time on my hands than I know what to do with. I don't care if it takes a month. I'm getting that motor in there. <laughs> right on. Buddy needs someone who works on excursion engines. Talking about the Ford excursion? SHO 3.2 quad cam V6 was 12,000 US in 2007. Yikes. Alan says that's everything, new motor, turbos, installed, etc. That's still a hell of a lot of money. Mohawk says, yes, I've taken the scamp out, just putting around town. I have car show crews in to attend tomorrow. I'll be making a video. Nice, I'll be looking for it. Evans just traded my 73 rotted Cuda for a solid 78 Dodge D-150 step side, 318 four speed. I'll be doing a video of the trade soon. Right on. Looking at the price of pickup trucks lately, I've been thinking more and more about just building a 408 stroker torque engine and sticking it in my 96 for a tow rig. Is that a little 318 that's in that truck, that 96 Ram of mine? It, it's a tough little bastard, but when you start putting a bunch of weight on it, it don't get any fuel mileage. And I'm sorry, I can build a 408 all day long. It's going to make a lot of torque and do better than eight miles a gallon, that's for sure. 
motor from Forge, 11 grand. Supposed to come out by taking the body off. Yeah, Forge have been like that since the late 2000s, especially with the diesels. You had to yank the cab to do anything with the stupid things. But I ain't doing that. Yeah, see, I've done it without, with the diesels anyway, I've done it without pulling the cab, and it's a pain in the ass, but you can do it. Kevin says, I love your scamp mohawk. Who doesn't love that scamp? That thing's bad to the bone. Yeah, Ford makes a knocking noise. What year is it? Got a, is it gas rig or diesel? 7360 or gas. Chris Mopar says Ford cab forward design. Pull cab off, frame down to change the engine, right? Stupidest fucking way to build a truck I've ever seen. I guess it makes sense for putting them together, but. Sure is not friendly to work on. They always do a real good job at burying shit that makes it near impossible to repair down the road. And Finnish says you'll end up pulling the cab, Hanlins. Tugster says, heavens, what kind of shape are your Cordobas in? Says unfinished project. Come on now. I've watched YouTube videos seeing it done without taking the cab off. Oh, yeah. No, it can be done. I'm here to tell you it can be done, but pain in the butt. Just like anything, you got enough willpower, you can you can do it. The way I've done it with at least with the diesels anyway. I haven't pulled a gas engine out of here. But with the diesels, I just pull the bumper and the core support and the grill and the whole front end off the thing. And it actually makes it not too bad. Kind of a pain in the ass to get some of the stuff on top of the engine, but you can get it. Try doing a turbo on a, or not a turbo, but a high pressure fuel pump on a 6.4 Ford without pulling the cab it can be done but you might you'll say every cuss word in the book and you might even make up a few but it can be done i've done it yeah i don't have a rack either it's something i want real bad gas 2012 maybe not sure three valve other other junk engine so it's Probably a 5.4. If it's making a knocking noise, chances are the timing chain tensioners have gone to hell in it. Pain in the ass job. Some of those, some of those damn Fords, the timing, they had a timing chain on the front and the back of the engine. Yes, they are. Oh, unfinished says, Doug, sir, are they? They are roughly a rectangular shape. And Doug, sir, says, yes, they are. Twisted Dennis says, pulling the cab is the best way you can do it with jacks. Take the tires off and lower the frame. You have to put jack stands under the, under the cab to hold it up and drop the frame off of it. But if it comes to that, I'll make that happen, too. It said, brother, when there's a will, there's a way. Evan says, Dougster, I have two Cordobas and one Magnum. One Cordoba is a triple black 360 console sunroof car. The other is blue with white interior. That's a good looking car. 400 in it. Nice. Both had bad trans. Ran when parked. Magnum is mint. Rowdy big block paired with fine Corinthian leather. Sounds fun. 
I'll tell you, it was a fun car I used to have. Was I had an 83 Chrysler, New, I'm sorry, an 82 Chrysler New Yorker. It came from the factory of the 318, the lean burn, all the nasty shit of 1982. And I built me a nice, healthy 360 and put in that car. And that was a fun car. It was a nice car, but it was a fun car. I miss that son of a bitch. And Finnis says, Jack's 4x4s and some 55-gallon drums negate the need for a hoist. That's ingenuity right there, my friend. Makes noise when you put a load on it in the driveway. Does it sound like a rod knock? That's not above them things to starve a bottom end either. Small Cordoba interests me. Small block Cordoba interests me, heavens. Yeah, they are nice cars. Cordobas interest a lot of people, including me if I had the budget for another car. Hardly any rust at all in them, just a little in the lower quarters. No title for the Magnum. It's a 360 bench. Finish says, Dugster 318 will run, has one with a big block, I believe. Yeah, yeah, he put the, I think he put a 400 in that car. I, can't, I watched all the videos, and I forget. I think it was a 400. Mohawk says, got to go. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for the live, Tony. Thank you for hanging out with us, Mohawk. You have yourself a good evening and rest of your weekend. Yep, it's white, says Dugster. It's my 75 Roadrunner. The guy won't sell it back. <laughs> that sucks. Does he at least drive it, Dennis, or does it just sit? If it just sits. That really sucks. Some say chain, but it sounds like a rod, so I don't know. Don't want to find out someone else can. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I've done the five fours and four sixes and some of the pickups. It's same shit, different shovel, basically, is the excursion. And it's a bear cat of a job. But the timing chain issues on those were fairly common tensioners will go to hell in them and i'll tell you strangely enough a lot of those engines called you know in those days called for the 5w20 or some of them the 0w20 but most of those fords called for the 5w20 oil guys had put heavier oil in them thinking well it's better for the engine to have heavier oil in them. it simply isn't so that 1030 or a 1040 or 1540 you know, at heavier oil they put in those things and it actually screwed with the hydraulic working so those timing chain tensioners and would cause failures been there done that seen the book seen the movie read the book Mr. Mopar Dennis says it's in his museum he has he owns every year of the Roadrunner cars built. It's cool. You know what? I probably wouldn't sell it back either if that was the case. Dugster Heaven says your Upper West Coast. He is in Washington. And Finnish says the one thing that I've learned is that rust free means different things to different people. Boy, that is no lie. Functional says, hey, Tony, hope you're doing well. I'm just busier than a three-legged cat covering shit. That's what I am. But I can't complain. Unfinished business. Thanks for the advice. I don't want to come across as if I don't appreciate it. That's from Hanlon's Garage. 
Max Wedge says, big motorhome has the same engine. Yeah, in those years, they stuck those five fours and everything. Unless it's a V10. I actually just had a, what year was it? An 03 motorhome. I just, it just left yesterday I had here. I put a window regulator in it. And that thing had a V10 in it. The guy that owns it now, he bought it from a guy that raced motorcycles. And kind of a funny story, I guess, because they could hear him coming from a mile away. He had a healthy exhaust system on this V10, and it actually sounded pretty good. But it, just, it, was, it was far from quiet. 1500 for the Magnum, 1200 for the Triple Black, 700 for the Blue and White. Maybe I can make a video of them soon. Evans Mopars is willing to part with those cars for those prices. Anybody's interested. Put a few extra bucks in his pocket for that will be a car again charger. Hammond's garage says, I'm old school. I'm 54 years old and stuck in my ways. I'm 46 going on 47, and I'm pretty well stuck in my ways, too. So I hear you, brother. He put some wrong oil in it. Well, if that's the case, the very first thing I do is change the oil and put the put the correct. Um, if it's you know if it's one of the series of engines, I think it is. It it, it should call for a five W twenty. Definitely get the right oil in it because if it's got the wrong oil in it, that could be why them chains are rattling. If that's what your noise is. Because the hydraulics don't like to pump up with that heavier oil. They're, they got hydraulic tensioners in there that runs off engine oil pressure. Stan the Man has a 76 Roadrunner white with orange stripes. 347-27 combo. Well, he, in 1976, he put that 340 in it. But that is cool. P says, Hanlon's, it wasn't advice. I was just yapping. <laughs> Whichever way you go, I'm sure you'll be just fine. Twisted Mopar Dennis says, Heavens Mopar, send me pictures. Assuming you both have each other's phone numbers. If not, you both have mine, and I can make that happen for you. Romeo, I've got business for you, too, when you're ready. <laughs> yeah. Busy, busy, busy. Those are seriously good prices, Heavens. I would have to agree with that, Dugster. Max Wedge says it is a V10. Okay, so that being said, take everything I've said with a grain of salt. I've never actually been inside one of the Ford V10s, although I do believe they are extremely similar to the other mod motors, the, the 4.6s and the 5.4s. I could be wrong. If, if they do share the same similarities, I think they do. Some of what I said could still hold true. Thanks, unfinished projects. I'll make it happen. Twist them old parts saying hello to Functional Histories. Victor, I haven't heard a V10 that I've liked the sound of yet. Yeah, they do sound weird. But the funny thing is, yeah, I will say for a V10, whatever exhaust this guy had on this motorhome, I mean, the only reason it was here is I put a window regulator didn't even really look at the engine he said the batteries were weak so i put a battery charger on it for a few hours for him but either way uh, for a v10 it actually sounded half decent but yeah they um 
they got a weird fucking sound to them. Dougster says, heavens, I could vice grip one of them to Michigan. Could I vice grip one of them to Michigan? Ah, he wants to do a vice grip garage style. Hey, Derek could do it. Why can't you? Finish says, I only use oily oil. <laughs> well, I would hope so. Evan says, we'll do Twisted. Dougster said, yes, he did. And the 340 is spicy. That is freaking cool. 340s are sweet. Dougster, if you... Dougster, unfinished project says, Dougster, only if you have a dealer tag. <laughs> Hamlet says, night all, gotta go, take care. You too, man. Appreciate you hanging out and chatting with us tonight. Kevin says, no, Dugster, they've been dead for a while. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. I mean, I've seen Derek Bieri fly across the country and drive something home that hadn't ran in 20 years. So just because they've been dead for a while doesn't necessarily rule it out. I think Dugster can pull it off. Hell, I wouldn't be ashamed to go up there and try. Of course, it's not nearly as far for me as it is for the Dugster, but I think it'd be fun. Hell, if the Dugster wanted, if the Dugster and you make a deal and Dugster wants to do that, we need to plan this. This could be a cool collab video. I would be willing to drive up to Seattle and make a project out of it and see that Dugster drives that car home. That would be fun. What do you think, Mr. Dugster? Hanlon says the original motor had no oil pressure. What's going on, Jason? Good to see you. Happy Friday. Happy Friday indeed. Cold snack here. I'll drink to that. Allen's did get it to run, but it squealed really bad. Yeah, probably already spun at least one bearing. Swiss Mopar says the V10 last built in 2017. Somewhere around there. Make damn sure to get 710 oil for my cars. Speaking of motors, belt driven oil pump. I think it went bad and starved it of oil. Yeah, and then it just went south from there. Mr. Mopar says 1819 Ford V10. Not 100% sure on that. Scott said the transmissions were bad. Did. However, 727 is not a difficult transmission to throw some pieces and parts in and make it drive. I dumped that some bitch out in the dirt and build it right there. Have no fear, Dugster. It's happening, Junkyard D. Unfinished mixed degreaser and won't be so oily. <laughs> Dugster says my budget is my only limitation. Yeah, it goes for a lot of us, including myself. See, if you were to buy the car... We could build a trans, take it with you, or I could build a trans, bring it up there, and we could swap it out. Hell, I've even got core transmissions here. Well, 
Unless they're just clogged transmission filters, change and good to go. You're welcome to try. It's awful dang hard to clog a uh, Acron type filter like what's in the 727s to the point of no flow. And if there's that much trash in it, it's because the clutches are wasted anyways. Jason says, got to go. Oh, I got to get with Gunslinger and make some work shirts. Hit me up, brother. I can certainly help you out. If you don't have my phone number, I'd be willing to bet you know somebody that does. Truth be told, he did dig deep enough into the Gunslinger graphics website and you'll find it anyhow. Or just shoot me an email. Unfinished is throwing up Wendy English's link. Max Wedge says 727s are simple. Did a few in the dirt. One last a week, it's in my <laughs> in my max wedge. Or one last week, it's in my max wedge. Yeah, I'll send you an email, brother. Yeah, right on. Yeah, let me know what you want. We'll uh we'll get busy on it for you. Yeah, of course the dirt's not the ideal place. I'd at least throw some cardboard down and try and keep them somewhat clean, because Cleanliness is, as they say, next to godliness when it comes to building a transmission. It can be done. Believe me, I've built them in less than perfect conditions and had them live a good long time. Well, super cool as this would all be, I made a promise to Lady Dugster that no new projects allowed until one of the current ones are finished. Right? I don't blame Bad Tree Blake, heathens assembled. Yes, we are. How you doing, brother? Unfinished says, as long as it's not dirty dirt, you'll be fine. <laughs> I like that. As long as it's not dirty dirt. And saying hey to the Blaker. How's your projects coming, Blake? I'm so damn far behind on YouTube and it's not even funny. Twisted says, need a couple hats. You have summer hats and winter hats. I can get just about any hats. These ones here, you know, are the are the full full back hats, but I can also get like the Richardson one tens or the one twelves, the 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 snap backs with the with the mesh, which are nice for summer. I was kind of I've actually I mentioned it to the, to my wife about getting been working on the embroidery for that i was thinking we just put on the hat you know basically the same thing that we did on your left chest on your shirt i think that would make a nice nice fill for the for the front brim of the hat what do you think of course i could print them on the hats as well but embroidery is always nice Dugster, why would you ever make that promise? Because a happy wife equals a happy life, or so they say. Not much waiting on J-Bo to get this D50 to HQ and then shoehorn the V8 in it. That's going to be a cool build. You guys going to bring that to No Name this year? Finished. 
whole bin would be more sterile than my garage. Mine is quite the mess currently, too, Max Wedge. It's actually embarrassingly a mess. And he gets more shelving up is what I need. I just got shit everywhere. And the problem is I got shit scattered everywhere, so it's hard to keep the floors swept because there's crap everywhere. Announcement, Doug, sir, Wolverine's unfinished project garage is a better idea, says Dean. Right, Doug? It's true. Unfinished likes it, Dean. LOL, if Jabo gets moving, that nice way of telling him get his ass in gear. <laughs> Mopar Dennis says, yes, that's what I'd like. Mesh snap back. Maybe enlarge the pick a little bit on the front of the T-shirt. Yes. The um, What's on the front of the T-shirt is four inches wide. The max you can do on a hat is five, so we could blow it up. Says, damn it, Blake. What's happening, Jabo? Con congregate your fecal material. What the? We just hit the weird hour? Yuck. Get your poop in a group. You got to do that not in the yard every couple of days with the dogs and a garden rake. Get their poop in a group and throw it in the trash. I do look forward to seeing that V8 and a D50, though. That's going to be a, a real cool build out of the Bad Tree Camp. I shit, I've I've been hunting for an S ten cheap for a little while now. Just not so much because I'm big time Chevy guy, but because I happen to have a couple of big block Chevys laying around that would be fun to stuff in an S ten. Get your S together. There you go. Five Max Wedge Dick Dastardly says, my five-car garage fits one if you're careful. <laughs> yeah. Um, my shop is about 1,500 square feet. And it's got my truck and my charger in it and my Harley. And if I'm lucky, once in a while, I can get a car in there to work on. Without backing something out. It's just a fucking mess. Compile your pile. That's a good one, Jason. Put little flashing lights and a rotating propeller. <laughs> Dust Devil Brian. What's happening, man? You're back. Everybody saying hey to Brian. He was here earlier and then he disappeared. And now he's back. Good to see you come on back. Run for about another hour. Link's up there if anybody wants to jump in and hang out with us. I will be shutting down at nine sharp tonight. Usually run late, but not this week. I got a bunch of shit to do this weekend. And I always say that, and I always end up running late, but, you know, I think I just got to stick to my guns this time. But I do like running, running the late night lives. I usually do real good on watch hours with them, and it's just fun. Fun hanging out with everybody. 
The Dust Devil Brian's link is up. If anyone wants to see a badass street freak duster, go check out his channel. He's done one hell of a job with that car, and he just keeps doing more to it. Every day, something, that car gets a little bit cooler. So definitely check out Dust Devil Brian's channel. Also in the description of this live and all my other videos, uh, we have t-shirts and hoodies available with Dust Devil Garage Brian's graphics on them. Scrap your crap. <laughs> Matter of fact, while we're sitting here talking about merch, you know, course i've got my own tony's hot rod garage we've also got the unity motorsports garage stuff rapid transit garage dust devil brian dust devil garage scott speed shop charger 383 mopar he's building that badass red rocket cushman with a 440 in it david visard we don't have anything just yet but we've still got that stuff in the works we're going to be coming out with some stuff for him Got Clint Street Machines Brat Fink t shirts. Of course, Dennis's uh, Twisted Mopar, that beautiful duster on the back of a shirt. Scott from Heaven's Mopars has a nice design available on my website. And of course, Ryan Barsness and then Cope Racing Trans. John Cope and the famous Casper Matic. Those shirts are available as well. Knuckle Duster engine is looking good, says Jason. Yes, it is. I have not had a chance to watch the video yet. It's in the watch later queue. I will be watching it tomorrow on a big screen in the shop. But from what I've seen in the thumbnail, it is a good-looking mill. Dugster says, yay, my Tigers won today. The only sports I follow is drag racing. Brian is at 924 subscribers, getting closer to his thousand. Well, he's got me beat by exactly uh, thirty-one subs. Wednesday says, Jason's Garage, you need to start your Thirsty Thursdays back up. Hell yeah, th those were always good good lives. I enjoyed hanging out and watching them. Yeah, yeah, Jason, you do. You need to start your Thirsty Thursdays back up. Good times. Dust Devil Brian says, I have three more things to add to the engine before it goes back. Back in. Three more big changes. Oh. Jason also agrees he needs to restart his Thirsty Thursdays. Make it happen, Captain. We'll definitely watch. So how much longer do you think, Brian, before the engine's back in the car? Ryan needs a trans break. I completely agree. The car be beast with a trans break in it. Tell you what, I sure do love mine. Got to get some traction, though. <laughs> I let off the trans break, and some bitch just sits there and burns rubber. I do love that Cope valve body. I've had a couple other manual shift valve bodies in the past, and there's nothing, nothing compares to the Cope Racing Transmissions valve bodies. John Cope is indeed the man. Crisp, clean, fast, no fucking overlap. They just work well. 
It'll be about a month or so. Going paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> Dumping every dime into that car, ain't you? Man, I hear you. That was me last year. Trying to get that truck together. Every fucking dime I could get my hands on went into it. Max Wedge, I want new chrome bumpers, but I may make them gun bluing bumpers to be different. That'd be cool. That would actually look cool. Getting close to be able to do Thursdays. My classes were on the same day. I've been helping my instructor teach some. Well, that's cool. That is actually pretty cool. Yeah, I'm actually hoping I can spare the change this year that I'm going to have to spare to do the things I need to do to the ass end of the truck. Otherwise, we're going to throw some 28105 slicks on it because that's what I've got and see what it does. The finished project says flight instructor? Question mark. Is that what you're doing, Jason? Flight instructor? That's cool. Did. Some of them Porsches were pretty cool cars. Trying to remember what the hell the 924 looked like. Oh, yeah. I know the car. Hello, L. I'm finished. We would all be in trouble if I was flying. Dean says transaxle. Twisted Mopar Dennis says, I think we are all going paycheck to paycheck. In today's world, that is no lie. It is definitely tough out there these days. Wendy is keeping Dawn in line. <laughs> or trying, anyways. I heard some really good things are coming to his car. True that, Twisted. True that. Well, it's even getting hard to afford to buy beer. And that's, a, that's enough to piss you off. Yeah, I had a good time at your place. Jason said, if I didn't fart, I would not have a cent in my pocket. <laughs> That's a good one. What's Hello, happening? Peter, the Dugster's here. What's happening, Mr. Dugster? Uh, dude, I am totally honored that you'd be willing to make the trek up to see me off in this supposed Cordoba project. Dude, that'd be fun. That would be fun. 
that would be fucking fun. And you know, it's it's wouldn't be that damn. I mean, I mean, it, it's a little bit of a haul, obviously, from where I'm at to Seattle. But it, you know, it ain't like you, right? But you know, we could tag team that son of a bitch, and I guarantee you, between the two of us, we could put it on the road. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, and I'll tell you what. That being said, I would build a damn transmission and bring some bitch with me, whether bring, we need yeah. it or not. Yeah. For sure. If you already know it's got a bad transmission, yeah. Well, you already video. think it does anyway. Hell, if you don't need it, great. If you do need it, drop some bitch out and throw it in. Right. Tell I me that wouldn't be great content for both of our channels. If I were to do it, it would be that. i just say, trans is bad, swap it out. Yeah. I wouldn't even fuck with it. I got a quality right. unit with me. Here we go. Yeah, you know, and for a for a basically stock car, let's face it for what it's worth. I mean, I could throw a, a working transmission together for a few hundred dollars. I mean, it's not like it would be a bunch of money, you know. This is true. This is true. Yeah, just take a take a day and dive through it. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've got the cores here. I mean, I I've got let's see, I've got two or three small block ones. I got a couple big block ones. I've hell, I've even got a damn uh, 46 out of a Cummins and a 46 gas. But I've got small block, and big block ones out there. I'd love to have a 518 for uh, a built 518 for shop truck. That's the ultimate for me. Yep. Yep. I think eventually the transmission that's in my truck will probably end up in the charger. Because the original plan all along was to put a 518 in the truck. Yeah. And it was just, you know. Overdrive, uh, lock up, why yeah. not? Right. You know, and that, that was what I wanted was was that. And it was just it, time and money was, you know, was why it didn't happen. You know, I mean, let's face it for what it's worth being a big block. I mean, that, that was, that was going to tack $800 on the build right there. Just the adapter. That's that's the only yep. thing. I mean, I'd be fine with spending belt. all the big coin to get that 518 built. Sure. But it's just that added cost of just getting that adapter or the ultra belt. Either either route you right. go is expensive. Well, mm -hmm. I the amount of power that I'm putting out, I wouldn't want to run the adapter. I would definitely want to go with the ultra belt. Even even John says it's you know, it's too much power for the adapter. Oh, great. Yeah, you just you just you just want to want to do the do the ultra bell, but that damn ultra bell is eight hundred dollars. So is that adapter plate? So either right. way, you're looking at right. So about, you know, just, so money. just do just do the ultra bell. You know the 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 uh, I bought the trans brake from John. The the price difference in the trans brake isn't that much. A few hundred dollars. The uh, of course, the transmission kit, you know, the build kit itself, you know, the mm -hmm. clutches. I was at CRT shit, last you know. Saturday. What's that? I was at CRT last Saturday. Oh, yeah. You've been hanging out up there a lot. Perhaps. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I would be too if I was just a little bit closer. Oh, I'll tell you what, like uh, me, two hacks, and John were all talking. And I said, could you guys imagine what it would be like if we all lived in the same town? We'd never get nothing done. Yeah, we would. <laughs> yeah, we would. And then it would be dumb shit galore. Right. It'd be great. Yeah, it was funny. Me and John were talking one day. He said, I, could, I couldn't work for him because we'd never get anything done. We'd always be fucking off having fun. <laughs> right. Listen, some old part Dennis here says, I'm lucky to afford water out of my faucet and I have well water. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> wow. That's a good one. People be broke these days, man. Man, that's no shit. Old Sleepy Joe's done a good job of fucking us up. Oh, yeah. Hey, unfinished projects throwing your link up. Woo! Go check out the Dugsters channel. Some pretty cool shit over there. Including a Lady Dugsters Beetle. Yes. Elka. That is a cool car. 
it uh i really like the primer gray color on it it's got that right uh um that right sheen to it still it's held up well over the winter unfinished nice. it's uh jameson rocks tonight nice dougster is drinking Here. pure grain and ice <laughs> wendy says max i've been with don since i was 14 years old now i'm going to be 53 that's a little more in a minute Evans Mopar says, when I bought the blue Cordoba, the transmission didn't work. My dad changed out the filter, and then we drove it home and drove it for like 10 years. Wow. Hmm. Very interesting. Interesting. It's very, very difficult to plug a Dacron filter because it gets its oil from all the way around. Ah, so the bottom could be completely plugged, but it'll still pull from the top. Sure. Yeah. Gotcha. No, that's I mean, there's so much surface area to it. it. It's it's really unless you know, unless the transmission somehow got filled with dirt or something, you know, because to Which generate enough seen. clutch material to plug up that filter, there ain't no clutches left. Yeah, when you you're like, oh, maybe I can get away with a little, you know, fluid and filter change. And you drop that pan and you can write your name in the sludge in the bottom of it. Yeah, yeah. that well, that gives you second thoughts about a cross-country trip. Yeah, it does. Ah, it'll be fine. <laughs> Dennis was married 31 years, couldn't make 32. There's a troll on my screen. There is not. That is Functional Histories uh, saying uh, he's talking about me, Tony. Yeah, I know. I think okay. he's calling you a troll. Oh, I am a troll. I I'm self-admitted. I am a troll. <laughs> I am. See, here in Michigan, uh, in the Lower Peninsula, we are below the bridge. And all the Upers, the Upper Peninsula guys, call us trolls because we live under the bridge. That's funny. Yes, that is I'm funny. I did not. I, I did not know that. I never heard that yeah. one before. So you're troll. a fucking bridge troll. Yep, I'm a bridge troll. <laughs> well, I guess I'd rather be a bridge troll than an ogre. Right. I can be accused of that too. And this is my swamp. <laughs> Are you related to Shrek? Could be. <laughs> I'm his albino brother. Nice. Max Wedge says, I seem to make women go to the dark side without me. Hmm. <laughs> That's sad. Dean says, because <laughs> That's, that's the, the way we <laughs> troll. <laughs> nice. I nice. <laughs> But a ta. So Dugster the troll is here. Hey, look at this. We got Mater in the house. Just got home from bike night a few minutes ago. Right on. Nice. Well, you stopped in just in time because we got about 37 minutes, 36 minutes left before I shut down. So before I can enjoy bike night, I need to replace the uh front engine uh cover seal um on my valkyrie and then i'll be back to riding again nice how big of a job is that on that bike um it's 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 a moderate job uh you've got to drain the coolant you have to pull the water pump you have to pull the front engine cover you have to pull the radiator hoses off and then there's two inlet tubes in the front of the motor. You have to unbolt those and just rotate them. You don't actually pull them out. You right. just have to rotate the flange down so you can clear the cover when you take it off. And what happened is, is when I put that in, uh, I reinstalled it. There's a long bolt that's really thin that goes in on the bottom of the water pump. And I broke, I had it cross-threaded and didn't realize it and broke it off. Oh, fuck. It. You got to tear yeah. it all apart. And got to tear it all crack. apart. 
and my buddy Eddie come over. He is he is meticulous. He is like the bolt extracting guru. Nice. And uh, so I called in a specialist, and Eddie spent literally six hours pulling this little t- little bit of a bolt out. Well, we think he he marred up the surface. I used a little Permatex and reused the gasket. And I think the only way, only place where I fell short when I put it all together was I got greedy and I oiled her up and I went for a ride. And I had a Before leak right the there. RTVs. The art, yep, the oil. So I got a brand new gasket for it. I just got to get back into it and completely yeah. change that RTV the whole bit. It. And then I'm going to slam it together and I'm going to let it sit for exactly 24 hours. Use the right stuff when you do it. Use the right stuff? Yeah, the Permatex. Yeah, it's Permatex makes it. It's called the right stuff. As far as I'm concerned, it's the only fucking RTV on earth. I won't use anything else. And it's black. It's dark gray, very like charcoal gunmetal gray very damn near what you're talking about get it on your fingers and do this and it turns you black but i believe i've used it yeah it i buy it in the in the miniature cock tubes the little the little short cock tubes Mm -hmm. that's the way i buy it because i use so much of it but hell i i put truck diffs together with it fill them up with oil and send them down the road in 30 minutes and they don't leak really yep synthetic gear oil okay okay no so you write stuff that son of a bitch and you leave it set it'll never leak again okay you'll actually be cussing that product if you own the bike long enough to have to take that engine apart (laughs) oh great (laughs) well that's good to know because that bike other than this this is the first problem I've ever had with major problem I've ever had with this bike. Oh yeah, it needs a front tire, it needs front brake pads, and it needs rear brake. Or no, no front brake pads are fifty percent, but it needs rear brake pads. So yeah, rear. Well, that's not too bad if the rotor's still good, so you don't have to pull a wheel. Well, the to get it all apart, I have to pull the wheel. Actually. I don't have to pull the wheel. I just have to back the uh, uh, swing arm bolt, the axle bolt, over far enough to allow me to pull the whole assembly up. Right. So you can get the caliper off of it. To get the caliper off. But to do that, I might be able to cheat it with the fender still on because I'm supposed to take... They want you to... The the factory wanted you to pull the exhaust and screw that And as as easy as that would be, just to pull the exhaust, you on my bike, you've got to take the quarter fender off. You have to take the shocks off of the bike, and then you lower the bike all the way down to get the axle to clear the top of the pipes. And then you can draw that out. And I know that sounds pretty simple in what I said. It's a bear to, in practice. Yeah. Oh, no, I know. I know. I spent the better part of yesterday afternoon repairing the exhaust on my Harley. Oh, got, and I got to pull the saddlebags. Sorry, I have to pull the saddlebags too. My Heritage has the OG before they called it a pro pipe. The Vance and Hines two into one. Yep. On it, and it last year it developed a rattle. Well, it turns out the clamp had fallen out of it that holds the heat shield on the on the baffle part of the pipe after right. after you know merges into one well the problem is the end of the baffle at, at the exit of the pipe that Vance and Hines system has three little screws that holds the actual baffle to the cast aluminum chromed end cap that goes on it you know for the exit well because that clamp had come undone and disappeared it had been wobbling around and it wallered out and tore the it tore the three little there they were 1032 screws three of them that hold that assembly together Mm -hmm. and tore them out of the aluminum of course destroyed the threads well and seeing as it's old school i bought the bike used in in 15 it's an 08 heritage 
I'm guessing the original owner of that bike damn near immediately put that system on it. And Vance and Hines has been discontinued for, for several years. And the, of course, now it's basically the same thing, but they call it a pro pipe and it's, it's a little different. So I can't get parts for the fucking thing. Of course. The alternative is a $2,000 exhaust system. Well, fuck me running, right? I just, the holes were big enough. And they weren't damaged out so far that I I, I just I ran a, a, a 1224 tap in it and put 1224 screws in it and put it all back together with a new clamp. And Perfect. She's fucking golden. <laughs> but it took me a better party yesterday. All afternoon. right. I like your fix. What was my fix going to be? I already had a fix in mind. What do you think mine was going to be? For your busted bolt. Yeah, no, no, not the busted bolt for that for that Vance and Hines problem. My fix would have been riveted. You can't rivet it because it doesn't go clear through. Oh, of course it don't. And if it, yeah, because if it went clear through, the the screw holes would be visible. It's okay. the end. It's the end of the pipe. It's the decorative cast aluminum chrome to the very ass end of the pipe and okay the i inside, was side yeah now yep. worst case scenario yeah i would have drilled it through and let it look like shit you know? i wasn't thinking that i was thinking of a actual in in pipe baffle right right yeah yeah that would that the rivets would, would otherwise but would have been a great idea my other thing i would have done if i couldn't repair the holes is i would have drilled it through machined it flat because of course it's tapered and decorated mm -hmm. machined it flat and put it together with stainless steel screws and nuts and then it would not look like shit you'd see the screws but they would be you know nice and it would have a nice finished look you know, of course, I would have had to find somebody at a bridge port that I can borrow to do the machine work. But <laughs> and then take those stainless screws and do that flame burning rainbow thing. Yeah, maybe. yeah, and turn them purple. And yeah, get the the purple rainbow. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling it. Yeah, uh, you know that that would have been alternative number two. You know, because there's no way in hell I was gonna. I mean, because there's nothing wrong with the rest of the system. I love the way it performs. I love yep. the way it sounds. Yep. There's, there's just no earthly reason to go spend, you know, eighteen or two thousand dollars on a new exhaust system. That fucker was getting fixed one way or another. My friend had a Vance and Hines set for a uh, Kawasaki, and he was missing just a few pieces. On a whim, he called Vance and Hines and asked him about parts. Oh, we sell parts. Okay. What do you got? Kawasaki. We don't make Japanese motorcycle parts. Uh, okay. Well, you did it one time because I have a piece of yours. Nope. We don't make Japanese motorcycle parts. Was it knocked off? No, no, no. It was. They, they it were was all, just done. Yeah. They were done with motorcycle, with Japanese bikes, and then they went Harley. Yeah, and, it was just yeah. that old. Yeah, it was that old. It was that old that the guy he got on the phone didn't yep. even know. No, no, no they, they don't. They don't recognize it. They don't care about it. Yeah. They are done with Japanese bikes, and they are American only. Yeah, that kind of sucks. That yeah. that sucks actually, because I've you know I've always I've liked I've always liked Vance and Hines. It's a first class product. They've right. always. They've always had great customer care and great customer support. And I have in the past uh, for customers on a whim, on a stroke of luck, been able to procure replacement parts for two or three year wow. discontinued products. It was oh, just okay. new old stock laying around, but not something like mine that's been out of production for 15 years or so. Right. You know, that's that's a tall order. It's you know, I, I didn't even bother to call them. I would have been flabbergasted if I'd called them and they would have said, Yeah, we can get it. Yeah. We have it. Yeah. Oh. I've got a I've got a 1980 Kawasaki KZ 1000 Oh yeah, we got parts here for you. What you need? 
you know, and of course, my very last ditch effort would have been to buy the baffle section of the new version of the pro pipe. And as long as as long as the primary collector was the same, the the the, the head pipe part of the system should be, you know, it visually looks the same unless they right. change pipe diameter or something. There's absolutely no reason why I couldn't put the new model of the second half of the system. Maybe have to change the, the bracket that goes to the frame or something. But you uh, bought that bike with the two into one header on it, right? Correct. I bought correct. the bike used. Okay, bought the bike used, and it already had the two into one header. It on already it. had the. It already had the Vanson Hines two into one. On. I just want to know. I was hoping that you had driven it with a stock with a with a split exhaust versus the two into one. And always when two cylinders run together, they more cylinders run together, more power. But I just want to know if it is it something you feel in the butt dyno. That bike, no. I I have ridden bikes with the same engine and transmission combinations on them, the same tunes that I have on this one on them with like a set of straight shots on it or something. Yeah. Like and shotguns. You, the butt dyno does say yes. You definitely down low is where you feel it. Okay. They, they, it definitely does, you know, produce more torque and, and it's been shown on an actual dyno too, but oh, of course, dyno numbers are one thing. The butt dyno is something, but dyno is different. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, more action. power is more power. If I can show a horsepower, I've gained a horsepower, but will you feel oh, that I can horsepower? feel it? It's more than a horsepower. Even right. Right. You know, I mean, hell that bike is 775 dry. You know, so with fluids in it, full tank of fuel, my 280 pound ass on it. I mean, it's it's lugging what 11, 1200 pounds down the road. Yeah, my Valkyrie's 800 pounds, and I'm yeah. not exactly a light guy. So, yeah. Well, uh, fun fun fact: I hit a doe with that Valkyrie oh, in Southern shit. Michigan. Yep. Yep. Ouch. I, I left my friend Ron and Dar's place, and uh, it was a summer evening, uh, right at that like, beautiful red sky. Sun was going about about down, beautiful red sky. Said goodbye to Ron and Dar, jumped on their street, and it's it's an Indiana road, if that makes sense. I know you've never been there. They're very narrow. There's no center line. There's no markings on it. It's the southern Michigan is a lot like northern Indiana. So I'm going down this road. I'm headed west. Sounds a lot um, like Wisconsin roads. Yeah. Yes. Which I am familiar with. Okay. So you do know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. So I'm headed westbound towards the highway. And I'm a good minute out in the country. And I'm not even two miles away from Ron and Dar's place. And there's this grove of pines on my right. Here comes a doe. And I had no time to stop or anything. I just hit the brakes. And I hit her right in the boiler maker, hit her right in her rib cage. I heard her exhale. I heard her go. Pow! I knocked the wind out of her. She continues to run to my left. I feel my bike. I, I feel the impact. My bike shakes a little bit. I never lost traction. I never wiped out the bike. And she runs off to my left across the road and jumps into the corner, into the open field i actually am saying did this just happen pull off to the side of the road and get my shit together man my adrenaline is my kneecaps are twitching i'm so scared the bike's fine i'm fine no deer in the field that was the biggest mistake and uh yeah Every stop sign from there to the highway, I stopped and took a walk around the bike just to make sure I was okay and the bike was okay. The bike belonged to my father. My father shook out the whole chrome catalog on this bike, including a <laughs> wire uh, grill or um, fender protector. I have a, I'll, I'll show it on a video sometime. My fender has a little wire protector on it. 
and that's what hit that deer. There was a little deer hair on it. It didn't hurt my bike at all. Nice. And I was doing probably 45 miles an hour when I hit that doe. Lucky. Yes. You know, knock on wood, the last time I wrecked a motorcycle, I was 13 years old. And you're yeah. being stupid. Hi, What's Wendy. That? How are you? I'm Doug, oh. but Not being yeah, stupid. I mean I hear you talking about deer. Yes. Oh. Well, yeah. Don's first day back to work after the new year, I put full coverage on the Ford Freestyle. Yeah. His first day back to work, driving down the road, now, didn't he hit two deer? He hit one, and then he hit another one, and then someone behind him hit it, too. That sucks ass. Yeah. Many years ago, um, at the place I was renting, a uh, a big old buck got hit by a semi truck right in front of my house. Oh, and I got a dead buck in my front yard, and okay, so I did what any other good old boy from Michigan did. I drug his ass in the house, and we chopped oh, him up. <laughs> and uh, the whole right side of him was so badly bruised we had to throw it away the Why, whole the right side his shoulder his rump the whole thing that's where he got hit because his of the whole, blood yeah because of the blood well, he hit, if you soak it in vinegar and cold water it will pull that blood out of there really so you yeah. can you can make bruised meat yes Oh shit! I didn't no know shit. that. That vinegar. Well, hey, the dogs ate good. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> the vinegar. The dogs ate good. The vinegar will pull the blood and the hair off of that. I still pulled a hundred pounds of meat out of him, so that's all good. Oh, that's big boy. Yeah, he was a big boy. Yeah, we get we get some good we get good deer up in Michigan. All those cornfields. Yeah, but just soak it in cold water with vinegar. Well, good to know. Well, now you know. See, now I know. You that was many years ago, right. too. Distilled white. Oh, Don said distilled white vinegar. Oh, distilled white vinegar. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Don. And if your Thanks, water's Andy. not cold enough, add ice. Okay. Cold water and distilled vinegar. Yep. Huh. Something, something every day. Every day. Thanks. We've saved a lot of deer meat that way. And my mom taught me that. I, that's why old people rule, man. Old people right. rule because they know all those little tips and tricks and all those old things. Yeah. yeah. Trust me. If an old guy comes up to me and says, hey, you're doing it all wrong. Do it this way. I'm like, Wait, uh huh. Uh huh. That's right. Yeah. Are you calling me old and I'm not a man? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, you said old people. I'm sorry. Yeah, old people. Right. Doug. That's funny. Yeah. Hey, but I mean, you know, they say that when an elder in uh, your neighborhood passes away, it's like a library burned down. Yeah. Dean says, see the Norton Nemesis brake caliper removal video by Alan Millard. Alan Milliard, that guy is amazing. He is this nice, <laughs> extremely nice, soft-spoken, uh, dry-humored Englishman that, you know, you'd never realize that he builds these absolute monsters of motorcycles in his little shed in his quiet English suburban na er, neighborhood. He yeah. has... I'll tell you something else. When we do venison, yeah, all of our venison goes in this sink with vinegar and cold water. All really? Because it, it takes the hair off of it. And then we take it out, and then we cut it up, and then we process it. How? Uh, what is your ratio of vinegar to water? Oh, I just dumped the vinegar. So like 50-50 or... 60 40 or I put like two cups in it for a sink full of water 
Okay. I mean, you, it could sit in there for an hour or more in the sink. Your venison don't taste like vinegar. If you're processing it with meat, pickled, oh, pickled vinegar, pickled, uh, pickled venison. Right. No, it don't taste like that. If you're going to grind it up with Hamburg or making your steaks or anything like that. Yep. We even put our hind quarters in there. Now, usually when I grind my burger, I will buy pork steaks and then I'll cut up a bunch of pork steaks to mix in with my burger to get the fat content up because just a straight venison burger is so dry and it doesn't stay right. together it's if you actually telling, want to make a hamburger fat. Telling stuff. I mix regular hamburger with mine and then I put uh, onion soup mix, eggs, rice, Ask Jason. It's garage. I've sent it to him. He makes chili out of it. Oh, that, that's good. good. It is good. Hmm. And like that venison we took to No Name Nationals last year, Tony. Yep. That was soaked in vinegar. That was off the hook. That shit was good. Yep. And we'll bring in two this year. Nice. Sounds to me, if you go home hungry, it's your own damn fault. That's, That's right. That's a fact. I've got a, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. I'll say these two things: cast iron. Oh yeah, that's the only way to cook. I'm gonna bake homemade macaroni and cheese down there somehow. Oh yeah. Someone's gonna let me use a stove. I don't care if it's John Cope. He's going to let me use his freaking stove so I can make this thing. <laughs> you just need a Coleman stove or something. One little camp stove is all you yep. need. Coleman stove's great. And you can get the oven attachment that sets on top of your Coleman stove and actually bake biscuits. Well, yeah. I, have a, I have a grill, but the pan I make, the big mac and cheese and it does not fit in it. It don't fit on the grill. I need a freaking oven. You need a Dutch oven and a fire pit. Yep. Yeah, we did uh, venison last year on uh, Buckingham's grill. Big, so, big all you really need is a table. Iron Dutch oven. Yes, cast iron Dutch oven. And really all you need is just a table, like a steel table, so it's like waist high, and then it's amazingly simple to cook with a Dutch oven. Your uh, a charcoal briquette equals 25 degrees of heat over its burn time. So if you have a 400 degree uh, cook temperature, how many how many charcoal briquettes do you need? And then you separate those between the bottom and the top of your dutch oven so yes let's say you need 16 so you put eight on the bottom and eight on the lid and you want everything out towards the outer edge so what you want to do is warm the edge of the dutch oven not the center of it with the briquettes They're with the briquettes right and then you have to pick up the dutch oven and turn the dutch oven a quarter turn clockwise and then turn the lid a quarter turn counterclockwise to Ooh. keep your heat even. I did not know that. A charcoal briquette is 25, 25 degrees of heat over its burn time. So I, if it's 400 I, degrees, how many charcoal briquettes do you need? And then divide them evenly top and bottom on your Dutch oven. I can bake cakes. I make casseroles. I make cobblers. Black, black <clears throat> iron magic, black, black iron magic. I have to search into one of them. Buy me yeah. one. Hey, all you need so is a metal idiot. table. Just a metal What's table because you've got feet on the bottom of most of your Dutch ovens, so you're going to be above your fire. And then, yeah, just keep being able to turn it, turn and turn your lid the opposite direction of the way you're turning it to keep the heat even. And uh, your cake will burn. Your nose don't lie. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Not the worst yes. burnt cake. 
I made a birthday cake uh, just sitting around the fire drinking beer. I made a birthday cake for this young man, Caden, and it was lemon poppy seed. And I made two cakes and stacked them. Frosting the whole nice. shebang. Made it right there in my camp. Hey, uh, hey, uh, so did you? Were you able to get your procedure done today? But yeah, I can make some good mac and cheese. Yeah, so Dutch oven's where it's at. You can make killer mac and cheese. <laughs> Such an ass. And if you're gonna buy one, oh, that's good buy the news. Lodge awesome. brand. The log brand? Lodge. Oh L O D G E Lodge. Okay, I'll write that down. Yeah. Um, new ones are great. If you can find an old one, even better. But Lodge has always been the brand. Hang on. I think my Dutch oven is like an eight quart, and it's a pretty generous one. I can feed an army out of that thing, but they make like 14s and they make big old uh, Dutch ovens. Yeah, I have to search it up. Don't be confused with the ones like you find for your household that are enameled and pretty. They'll work, but yeah, the one you want is black. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I love my cast iron stuff. That stuff will, I mean. Oh, Don has a cast iron kettle. It's like so big out in the garage. Is it a? It has a lid. Does it have a flat lid with a with a lip all the way around it? Does it have a metal? Does it have a little handle on it? It has a handle. Yes, I know it has a handle. Is it wire? I know it's metal. Okay. Does it have feet? Yes. Okay. Are they about two inches? You guys have a Dutch oven. Is you, if it has feet, then either it has a domed lid with no lip on it, or its lid actually has a little wall that runs around it that's about an inch deep or an inch and a half deep. And if that if you have that, then the lid will actually center itself and lock on top of the um will center itself perfectly on it. Because where actually, he, where he uh, got his cars from his uncle Sonny. Yeah. He was out there in Ohio and that and he bought these all this cast iron shit now. Oh okay. I said, What the hell do you need that container for or that pan for? He's like, oh, I brought it home to clean up for Uncle Sonny. That was like four years ago, and that damn thing's still here. Okay. Uh, is it all orange and rusty? No, it's all black. Oh, it's all black? Nice. Okay. Oh, it, oh it's a cast iron kettle. Well, look on the inside of the cooking surface. If there's any rust on it, just take uh, coarse salt, throw it in there, and half a potato and just scrub the living crap out of it. Oh, Don, Don knows how to clean up the gas tire. Oh, yeah. He loves his gas tire. Oh, yeah. And the best thing to do to get the patina up on a cast iron is to fry with it. And yep. the worst part is I have a glass top stove. I don't like them on my stove. I can see that. And I, I just got a new I can one. see that. Mine I understand how you feel because you don't want me running, you know, slamming down a big heavy something on your glass top stove. Well, every right. time you're supposed to use a pan on it, you're not supposed to slide them on it. You're supposed to pick them up and then move them. Yep. Yep. I can see why. Yeah, I got a natural gas stove here at the house. and Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah my daughter has gas, natural gas. I won't do natural gas. I'd rather have my electric stove. No, I went from an electric stove for many years in my apartment and uh, got a natural gas stove, and I've never looked back. Yep, I fucking hate electric stoves. Never looked back. Yeah, you can't <laughs> control them like you can gas. You can't control them like you can gas. 
Yeah, I want that right down to next to nothing. Right down we go. Well, and when you turn down the gas, the heat turns down now. You right. Turn down an electric stove and your shit burns before the sucker right. cools down. You got a blow. Yeah. And then it's even worse with the cast iron because the whole the heat. Starts to jump all over everything. I don't need my cats catching on fire. <laughs> no. Because I got them pilot lights in them. Not the modern ones. Not the modern ones. Oh. Mine's, mine's electric start. Yep, mine's electric start. You hit the switch just right. As a matter of fact, I can walk into the kitchen right now and do it. Turn it, and it'll go tick, 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 yep. tick. That's the igniter, and she'll light right up. Lights right up. Now, yeah, I know well, exactly what you're talking like about. them anymore? No. Yeah, they don't have pilot lights anymore. Well, that's nice. No, I just bought a goddamn new stove. <laughs> Yeah, they haven't had pilot lights for shit 15 20 years. Shoot, the uh old ass stove at our family cabin was this avocado, a light avocado green. It wasn't the dark green, it was like a mist green, and it had two pilot lights in it. They had these two oh, little chrome caps in between the burners on the left and the right. And if you stood over the right spot and looked straight down, you're looking right at the pilot light that was responsible for that bat. That that side. Because I one day it was I was doing washing up after breakfast and the stove was cold <clears throat> and I felt heat. I'm like, what's going on? Why is it hot there? And I looked and I seen the pilot light was lit on both sides. Bye, Wendy. And then there yeah. was two. Yeah, I learned some shit from Wendy tonight. Yeah, that's cool stuff. Hell yeah! I would now. I wish I didn't throw that ha other half a deer away. And we got yeah, no, it, got we got to get we got to get some prayers sent ASO's way, man. Yeah, he is getting beat the fuck up. It's a damn good guy too. I hate to see him going through that shit. I hope things get better for you, ASO. He's fighting. Well, as long as you fight. His whole damn body's giving out on him. Dean says, I wish he'd just throw his toys out of the cot. We'd know Alan was human. Yeah, it's been a rodeo. Excuse me. Yeah, but you still you're still riding though. That's the important part. He is still riding. That's the important Woo! part. <laughs> <laughs> if only it was just an eight second ride though. There is uh the man, the myth, the legend. He ain't no myth. He's a no, get he's it not done a kind of guy. He is a legend though. That's a fact. What's up, Cope? So last Saturday when I was at Cope's shop, uh a lot of he had a he had a surprising amount of customers in to pick up trans brakes and uh pick up transmissions. And uh, so each uh, customer got a complimentary potato with their purchase. The <laughs> he probably, Cole probably had potatoes left just laying around his shop. I had seen one guy put his potato down on one of the benches. That's funny. But yeah, each customer got a potato. So it's so slowly been off the couch in three weeks only to go to the mailbox. Fuck, that sucks. Damn. Scope says, how was your trip to Chicago? My trip to Chicago was epic. That is absolute truth right there, Cope. Yes, he does. Friends. 
I don't know if Cope was listening. We were watching earlier and we were talking about you and the, the, the whole go get the Cordoba deal. Yeah. Yeah, uh, go get in the Cordoba would have been sweet, for sure. Yeah, I just, I was talking to Heaven's Mopars, and uh, I asked, hey, could one of those Cordobas he have be road trip back to Michigan? And Tony's like, oh, man, yeah, let's go get it. I'll drive up from Phoenix. Or I'll drive up from Arizona, and hell yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> fun. It would be fun. It would be fun. No, well, something I have to aspire for. Once shop truck, either I, I got to get the CBX together, or I got to get shop truck together, and then I've been putting no all my new time projects in the until the existing ones are done. Right, one of the you no, know, that makes sense, and it's that's fair. That was a fair agreement because I did just surprise. I brought home shop truck, and she's like, "Another project." I'm like, "Yeah, what about your bike?" I'm like. What about my bike? Broader goes, performance and you cope. Make sure no motherfuckers steal your stuff, America. Yeah, you saw that shit, didn't you, Doug? No. Fucking Speedmaster outright knocked off Broader's fucking C6 trans brake. Oh, See those okay. videos? John okay. shared them on Facebook. I know. Well, that makes sense because in uh uh. Two Hacks Jeff's last video, he made sure to say that he got a broader performance trans break and not the knockoff. <laughs> right. Now it all makes well, those sense. Those motherfuckers had the balls to actually engrave his logo on their product. Holy. They wow. knocked that fucker off right down to the logo. Yeah, go watch the videos. Go check Jay Broader Performance. He, he broader did a video and then he did a uh, a follow up video on it. Summit, and I don't know about Summit, but I do know for a fact that Jegs, as of earlier this week, has completely ceased sale of anything Speedmaster branded over that. I can see that. And, and good for them. Yeah, fuck yeah, good for them. Good for them. You know, it's bad enough these bastards knock shit off, but to to have the fucking balls on them to actually to, to, to put 1000%. I mean, I could see reverse engineering off of something. Well, if it ain't patented, whatever, but for one thing, they put his logo on it, and the thing that brought it to his attention was some asshole bought the fucking Speedmaster one off a of Summit, and of course it didn't work because right. it's a cheap Chinese piece of shit knockoff. So they called Jay. <gasps> they tried to shit. warranty it through him? Yeah. And he's oh. like, we, and that's what threw up the red flag. We don't sell through Summit. So he got to looking, he got digging into, watch his video. It, it, it's like 20 minutes long. It's a pretty long video, but he tells a, he tells the whole story, but he got to, he got to looking into it and shit and, and found out it was a fucking speed master and he bought one just to see what the hell, you know? Right. We bought the speed master one. And he, he takes it out of the box, and to his surprise, it's got fucking CNC engraved broader performance exactly like his. That's balls. And you could tell it was different because the mill marks, and he points it out in the video, the mill right. marks from where the from where the, the billet is is machined are different, where his are nice and, and even. Theirs is all messy and shit, but you know, fucking ballsy. That is ballsy. Uh, Lars, I see, just chimed in. Summit made a comment saying they would no longer carry Speedmaster as well. Good for them. Good for them. That's a yeah, big. I, that's a big hit to the groin for them. Fuck yeah, it is good. No, well, I agree. I agree, but still, I mean, to lose. Yeah, the only thing that would be worse is if Jags turned around and said, hey, yeah, yeah, bud, it's been a good ride, but yeah, we'll talk to you later. J 
Jags has cut Speedmaster. Oh, they have cut Speedmaster. Yeah, that's what I was saying. See, I know a guy that's inside Jags. And I don't want to throw any names out there or anything, but I chat daily with a guy that works inside of Jags. And <coughs> Bob Davis. <Jags> has- <laughs> Hooked me up pretty fucking good, actually. What what's that? I said Bob Davis. <laughs> <laughs> but e- either way, I have on good authority that from inside the company that right. they have ceased sale of all Speedmaster stuff. That's In fact, a guy was begging me the other day. I got a Speedmaster gas tank. I need a cap for it. Sell me some Speedmaster parts. He says, I can't. Right. He says, I cannot do it. Not allowed. They are not allowed to sell Speedmaster anymore. So good. Yeah, you know, that's those are the two major players, Summit and Jags. And you know, as far as right, you know, the high performance, you know, speed shop stuff. So there's down by Water Valley, Michigan. There is um, Lane Automotive, and they're pretty big. And well, awful. you've got you've got your other ones. You got Speedway too, but you know the two right. major players. Everybody right. knows, right? So, I mean, Jag Summit, Speedway; those are the major players yeah. for sure. But I mean, and I don't know if Speedway ever did sell Speedmaster shit. I don't know if they do or they don't. Uh, I buy shit. We have a Speedway here in Phoenix, so I buy shit from them every once in a while. I'd love to go to a Speedway. Yeah. There, there. We have a speedway in Phoenix. It's a two-hour drive for me, you know, being up here in Prescott. But you know, well, I mean, it's, it's not. You know, the closest summit is is fucking Vegas or Sparks, Sparks, Nevada, to me. Well, so. walking into Lane Automotive is like walking into. Well, that's the only major auto parts place I've ever been in, and going in there is is the equivalent of uh, walking into a Jags or Summit or right. Or Speedway. Well, I mean, they've got a display, an indoor display of people's race cars on the building you see from the expressway. And there's like three cars parked in there at any time. Nice. Poor man's overdrive, C4 to board. Yeah, that's what I, I want to do, a poor man's overdrive. On uh, my 727, I need to find a lockup 727 just to get the uh, lockup parts off of it. John sells the parts to do it. Yeah, but I could save a few bucks if I sourced my own. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. (laughs) I was actually going to do that with mine, and he talked me out of it. Um, Really? I was going to buy the parts from him to do it, and he talked. And I'm glad he did because the converter that him and PTC came up with for me does everything I needed to do. Hmm. The lock up, you know, I don't see the reason I wanted the lock up wasn't for the extra couple hundred RPM. I was worried about heat. Build heat. Up. Me too. Got and a it's 700 fine. fucking horse big block and a 4,000 plus pound truck. I can go out on any 100 degree day and run that fucker 1,500 RPM or better under stall speed down the highway. And that son of a bitch never gets over 180 degrees. And I don't even have synthetic oil in it. I got just a BM trick shift in it. Just BM trick shift. And I've got the big. Dural uh, trans cooler on it. I don't even have a fan on the fucking trans cooler. Hundred day, and you're running that cold yep. with a seven twenty seven non lockup. Yep, yep. non lockup with the converter that John and PTC come up with for me. They knocked that fucker out of the park. Okay, well, now, now for a full that. on drag car. Could I loosen up the converter and gain a few tents? Probably. But it's not a drag only vehicle. Right. It, it's it supposed does to be the best. Good on the world. drag strip and it does even better on the street. So gotcha. It, it does what I needed it to do and it does it well. 
well, then maybe I'll just, I've got it a nice does computer. to drive it. It doesn't feel all that different, you know, like stoplight to stoplight kind of shit. Yeah. You know, you can tell it's a little bit looser. And when you, you where you can really tell it's got a converter in it, a, a higher stall converter is when you get after the throttle, but just cruising light throttle takeoff and shit. It's really not all that different to drive than a, basically stock converter no doubt nice but now when you now when you hit you know when you lock up the trans brake and put the gas pedal on the fucking floor she fucking comes up to about 3800 rpm before she stalls gotcha you know so it, thing, it, when it means business it means business but it can play nice too correct right correct. on yeah, so and it wasn't cheap. It was less than a thousand dollars, but it was wasn't much less than a thousand dollars. It was a For the fucking converter. It was a fucking expensive converter. Mm. I think I bought a, a used Bama old Bama converter off of a, a Mopar guy by me. It's purple. And uh I think that's a twenty five hundred stall converter. Gave a hundred bones for it. See, this is this is a nine and a half inch or a nine. I can't remember. It's nine or nine and a half. Cope, but no, I think it's a nine and a half inch converter. But you know, it's it's custom built. You know, PTC. Right. And it was worth every penny. And you know oh. what? Like I said, I I want to say it was like nine. I think it was nine hundred thirty bucks. I think is what it was with the shipping. And hell, you might save a little bit because you can just go over Cope's pick fucker up. Uh, it's only two hours, two and a half hours. I think I, I want to say it was right around nine thirty. I paid for that converter. But when you stop and think about it, I would have bought the same stall speed. I still would have needed a fucking nine inch converter with a lockup that would have been, been more, more like, money. Would have been more like thirteen fifty. Yes. Plus all the lockup parts. Plus all the lockup parts was about was like eight hundred bucks. Right. Six, plus six or eight hundred bucks. So well, not only that, and you got to have the lockup, uh, the lockup valve body. Right. Well, I bought a valve body anyway, so I would have bought the valve body with the lockup. Right. You know. So you're looking at just twelve hundred bucks at just just in the lockup system. Right. The and and I got plus and I got everything body. I needed. Now, obviously, the transmission is built. There's a lot more money in that transmission than just the converter, but you know. I got what I needed out of the converter for 900 bucks, basically, instead of a couple grand. You know, all the other modifications to the transmission would have been done regardless of whether it was lockup or otherwise, because, you know, it's built for a trans brake, governor delete, you know, everything's clearance, it's got the billet servos and shit in it, you know, See, and of course, you know, I've got the, you know, John's trans brake in it, you know, which I would have, that's, not part of this discussion though that's not the shit that builds the heat right converter is converter is you know and that and that was my reason for wanting the lockup the other now, thing, i could care less about the couple hundred rpm you're gonna save yeah but with the couple hundred rpm you could turn your you could play it uh your three speed like a six speed because let's say you're getting 600 RPM drop, you could run first, first lockup, unlock, grab second, second lockup, unlock, grab third, third lockup. Yeah, but see, you got a real loose damn converter to see a 600 RPM drop. Gotcha. Yeah, the only thing I could have potentially gained by going with the lockup would maybe be a couple of tenths in the eighth or the quarter mile. I agree, Junkyard D. Because going the way I did, I still don't have the overheating problems, which was my number one reason for wanting lockup. Well, I mean... The only thing lockup would give me would be the ability to run a looser converter and not worry about overheating. And pick up just a gauche more and MPG. Maybe. Maybe. But when you got a 700 horse big block, you know, 
MPG isn't exactly your first thought. True. <laughs> True. But look at Andy Wood with his old 393. He was getting 16 miles oh, to the gallon with a tunnel ram. Oh, I'm not saying I don't want to see fuel economy out of my truck. Believe me, right. I do. The fucking thing, you know, I want to be able to, the more, the less fuel I burn, the more I can enjoy it. Hey, but, you know, that. What, what I'm saying, my transmission choice wasn't necessarily based around gas money. As, right on as in you know longevity well you know, you know a four speed if i in the final pursuit of performance and economy that's why i wanted to do the 46 in the truck the fourth yes. gear and lock up the old and lock up and lock up well Plus the I overdrive guess. trans being a little bit longer i don't i wouldn't have to run a 68 inch fucking drive shaft <laughs> Well, you just saved me a bunch of money because I was still hell bent to build a lockup seven twenty seven. Now I'll just yeah. build a straight and, up. And it and again, remember, I don't know how wild your engine is. Oh, my you, engine's going to be four hundred horsepower. Yeah, if so that. you don't need that nine and a half inch thousand dollar converter. You can you know, you can go with a cheaper build. You can go with the eleven inch or the ten inch. Yep. See, part of why my converter was so expensive was so it can, you know, it's built to handle the horsepower. Oh, gotcha. You know, he can get a converter to behave the same way that's a cheaper converter that's not necessarily needs to handle that kind of power. Yeah, I now would. Talk, sit down and talk to John. Yeah, I need to. Tell him what you're doing and tell him what you want to do. Because I would like to You know, and that's have... the thing. I'm no stranger to transmissions. I've been building transmissions for going on 30 fucking years. Never do I sit down and have a transmission conversation with John Cope and not take something away from it. Gotcha. He is the fucking master. He really is. Now, I ain't going to sit here and say I know it all, but I know a fucking lot. Right. And I don't have a single conversation with that man where I don't take something away from it i always learn something gotcha you know and you know i've been building transmissions for a long ass time but i also got out of it for a while you know you never forget how right but like sometimes technology gets away from you and see that i was of the old school thought that you just can't do it and John said, oh, grasshopper, but you can. Let me prove it to you. And he sold me that converter. And by God, he was right. Yeah. Having They've something... come a long fucking way, man. Well, having all the good stuff in your automatic and then having him choose the proper converter for the whole show is just going to put the cherry on the Sunday. So, yeah. I still don't have a fucking billet drum in it. That needs to come, but I've got everything really? else. Yeah. Are you running a blanket or are you running an actual scatter shield? Uh, neither yet. <laughs> I need I'm, to put I need to put a blanket on it. Well, here's my qualm with a blanket. But 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 I do have the bowl tin, not just the bowl tin sprag. I've got John's drag sprag in. Drag sprag. And I've got, of course, his valve body, which gives me low band apply. Which High is pressure which, low band. Apply. Which is money in the bank on both ends. It's money in the bank on both ends. Is it foolproof? Fuck no. No. Is it light years safer than than doing it without? Oh, yeah, hell right. yeah. You know, I've probably decreased my odds of a transmission explosion a thousand times. Okay. But it can still happen until that drums in. And next time the transmission comes out, it will get a drum. Yeah, that is pretty pricey for the drum. Just well, yeah, and that and that was the thing. I was just out of fucking money. I could have put the drum in it when I built the trans, but it probably would have been the difference between me being a no name or not. A few weeks ago, did you watch the Cope's video where uh Lucas is telling Cope about how the guy, the customer, dropped a brand new billet drum on the floor of the shop? How did I miss that one? I never yep. missed John's videos. It when was, was that one? 
uh, a few weeks back. I did not back. see that one, though. It was a few weeks back. Lucas and uh, Cope are in the build room, and uh, they're just shooting the breeze a second. And uh, he says, yeah, the guy was here to pick up his parts, and he's handing him all his parts. He's got his hands full, and he hands him the billet drum, and it slips out of his hands, and the poor guy dropped the drum on the floor of the shop. And it hurt the drum? I believe it did. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? As it's one of those things where you don't dare send him out the door with that. Did John Even give him would another be one? Just fine. I, I, I want to say that they had to give him another one or sell him another one or something. That would suck. Right. Well, it wasn't a $700 drum, but you saw the video when I dropped the fucking piston when I was building the 428 for the rat rod. Remember that? Yes, I do. I was pissed. That pissing was a hundred bucks, and then I had to balance the fucker. It was thankfully, right. I, I want to say it was like three grams heavier. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was hit. The new one was heavier, right? Which, you know, thank fuck. You know, you can. It's harder to. You can't add. You know, if it would have been lighter, I would have had to have the whole damn rotating assembly rebalanced. Right. If it was heavier. I was able to, you know, match it down throw it in but you know i would still you know a hundred dollars for a piston and you know a couple hours work with a die grinder and a fucking scale <laughs> right i watched a, a guy over one winter when i was 19 he had a 327 chevy that was going to put in an 86 grand prix and oh, uh he had the whole engine apart on his coffee table and he had a little scale and he was he was uh making sure he was making all his parts weigh the same yep well that's the and first i didn't realize what i was looking. watching when i was 19 but yeah yep that's well that's the first step and then you know you you do the math and create your bob weights and then you know and then spin right balance the crank but yeah you want to match everything if you do it right I've seen guys just weigh everything out and make their bob weights accordingly. And well, that's to me not the optimal way to do it. Does it work? Yeah, if you put everything together exactly as so. Right. But you know, I kind of like to have interchangeable parts. You know, it's like my engine. I have, you know, in my truck, I have records of what the bob weights are. Um what each piston weighs, what each wrist pin weighs, what each rod weighs, big and small. And so, you know, hypothetically, it replaced, it's ready hypothetically, to go. if I, you know, if I had a failure of some sort that happened to get lucky and didn't damage the crankshaft, I could replace a single rod and piston, weight match it to my records and not have to rebalance the rotating assembly. It'd be all right. Because everything is the same, you know. And that's that's why I build engines the way I build engines. That's why my engines are by no means the cheapest shit you can get out there. Right. Uh, but, you know, you get what you pay for. You know, John Cope's transmissions are by no means the cheapest 727s out there. However... I fucking challenge you to find a better built one. So, uh, <laughs> the, uh, I, I, you ain't going to do it. So the, um, when Jeff came up, he brought his power glide from his, uh, slingshot dragster with him. And it's got a sticker on the bell housing that says CRT transmissions out of some place in Florida. No shit. No shit. There's another CRT. There's another CRT, and no, it's not Cope. Right. Oh, you and I both know that. Right. We know the only John Cope. Huh. Hell yeah. I wonder what that stands for. Constantly rebuilding transmissions. <laughs> If they're uh, playing with Chevys, they are. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. Am 
my CRT says Cope Racing Transmissions. Oh, yeah. I got Cope Racing Trans stickers and magnets and shit stuck all over. The I've store. got a magnet. I've got a hat. I've got, yeah. I've got uh, more than Got to get one. my hands on the goodies, though. I've got shirts and hats. and Of course, I make the fucking hats. Right. <laughs> and I've got know, one of your hats. You got a Casper hat? I have a Casper hat. You got one of the Casper Matic hats? Yes, I do. Proud of it, too. Yep. Yeah, you know, I'm doing all the making and fulfillment for John of the Casper Matic hats and shirts. I forward. believe I gave potatoes to one of the Casper Matic guys. Did you? Yes. <laughs> I think I saw the video or the post or somewhere. The fourth one went out the door. Right. Here yesterday or today or something. Saw something. He put well, I think it was Cas. I think it was Casper, a Casper Matic customer. Cool. I think number four went in that IDI, old IDI looking truck. I'm sure. It yeah. Goes yeah. IDI I saw that anymore. post. I saw that post, the square body Ford. Square body Ford, yeah, it's like an eighty or an eighty-one, yeah, diesel. Something, yeah, but it was a diesel. Yeah, I highly doubt that that thing has an IDI in it. If it does, I want to know what makes it chooch like that. Right. Well, it's been built. It's probably got a seven three in it, if not a Cummins. Oh yeah, it's yeah, it could have a Cummins in it. I, hell, I used to know a guy that made a real truck out. He had a 90 model Ford truck, and that was a nice fucking truck. He had a flat bed on it and mm-hmm. fifth wheel and gooseneck and a whole nine yards. And he 12 90, off. that's a 7.3 IDI then. If it was right, but no, his his was Cummins, but yeah, it was oh. originally was a 7.3 IDI, but he Cummins swapped it with a 12. Yeah. Off. Yeah, that was a nice truck. It had a I'm a believer. Be forty five hundred in it. Those six BTS and four BTS are amazing engines. Yes, they are. We, I got my hands on a bread truck with a million and a half engines or engines miles, million and a half miles. It was it was parked at the back of the lot for a decade. It just sat oh, wow. and went, and we got her all put back or. Primed her up and went about two and a half hours later, it was running and driving. And that thing ran on. I drove it from where we pulled it back to the shop, and I was amazed on how it drove. Dougster's going to spend a lot of money at Taters if he keeps going to Copes. This is, yeah, yeah. Junkyard D says, next time you're at Copes, Doug, you need to hide a whole bag of Taters everywhere in the shop. Well, I know that some of the, some potatoes got left behind, I because I noticed one on the bench. So yeah, well, as long as they don't end up in exhaust pipes, will be good. Yeah, that was discussed and uh, not encouraged by the dugster. Right, because I was Years talking. Go <laughs> my charger! I always backed it into the driveway. <laughs> some fucking asshole. Stuffed potatoes in both exhaust pipes. <laughs> that 10 to 1 compression little 318, when I lit that fucker off, it didn't care. It blew them out. Nice. <laughs> Spud gun 318. <laughs> it blew holes in the fucking wooden garage door. Yes. The only thing that sucked about that was it was a fucking rental house, so I had to buy a goddamn garage store for the fucking high life. speed potatoes. I love it. Smooth board potatoes. Yeah, that shit was funny though. I mean, I was pissed, you know, some asshole did that to my car, but luckily, you know, the engine was built well enough. It didn't blow right. through the head gaskets. It's usually what happens, you know. <laughs> Blew those spud gun them bastards right through the <laughs> door. I mean, it didn't blow holes in the door, but it, it, I mean, it damaged the wood. It, oh, oh, absolutely. You know what I'm talking about. You take absolutely. a piece of plywood and hit it with a sledgehammer. You know what it does. Yep. That's what it did to it. You know, I basically had instant fucking mashed potatoes all over the fucking place. Hell yeah. 
When I was in my uh, was so late pissed. teens, early 20s, I was playing heavily with potato cannons. And uh, I will say this, inspect your potato cannon, bolt your potato cannon together, do not overcharge your potato cannon. We used to fire them off of butane, you know. The... Yeah, I also, I even had my, my secret volatile mix that I will not disclose. This shit. You know, the canned butane. Oh, yeah. I had a cool one that I built. I filled it with that, and I even had a piezo lighter, you know, for a for a barbecue yep. grill. Yep. Yeah, you caulk Sp that in. Yep, spritz it with that and hit the button. Boom. Another one I like is the flint and steel spinner sparker. Yeah, yeah they work too. Yep. We used to make noise tubes for the 4th of July. It's just a section of... Uh, eight inch or six inch PVC and then just one of those twist sparkers. No nothing on the ends of it. And you just put some hairspray in it and then spin that and it'll just go woof. Right. Oh I've done it too. You know, well, hell I use the spud gun and just put like wet toilet paper in it. You know, a big <laughs> wad of wet toilet paper. You know, basically like a blank, you know, like a blank yep. shot shell. Yeah. You know, and it, it makes a little bit of a mess, but it's you know non- non-lethal non-damaging and it makes them make a bigger boom than just fire have your machinist buddy make you a golf ball cannon those are pretty fun running on air pressure there you go <laughs> those are a lot of fun who needs a golf ball cannon just go find happy gilmore yeah you'd be surprised on how far and how fast you can sling a golf ball <laughs> right Dan uh Junkyard D says, I can just hear Cope in his best Dennis the Menace voice. Dogster! Easy, easy Mac and Taters to go. That sounds like a <laughs> fucking mess. Kevin's I missed the whole story about the Cope and potatoes. I missed something. Okay, so Cope... Uh, Cope's big joke for a while was potato cams, you know, potato, 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 potato. Right, right. So I'm long before I actually met Cope, I was buying big block parts, uh, in his area. And I'm like, crap, I'm just about driving right past Cope's shop. I'm going to leave him a potato. So I took a potato and signed it and left it on the door of his shop. Lucas found it. And then that's just kind of been our thing. That's how that's and history was started. That's how the history was started. My neighbor used to, Heaven's Mopar says, my neighbor used to empty pop or beer cans and fill them with water. <laughs> and shot those? Wow. That's a fucking, that's a cannon right there. That's a cannon. We would uh, take, uh, we would do a candy cannon. And uh, it was a six inch bore cannon, and you had uh, two pieces of the real thick cardboard, and uh, it was they were both wrapped in tin foil. And then we would get a bag of the, the Hershey's uh, little candy bars, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, the little, yeah, singles. We'd get three bags of those, and then for the kids, we do a candy can, and you'd throw like half of half a pound or quarter pound of powder in and then your fuse and then you'd lay one of the cardboard things in the three bags of candy and then you had your lid on top of it and then we'd all the kids would stand back and we'd light it off and then the kids would go pick up the candy nice dean says it's hazing abuse of power and misuse of potatoes dugster you must repent <laughs> negative <laughs> Negative. I am on the potato side. The potatoes have the name of Bud the Spud. Also, look up that term by Stompin' Tom Connors. The potatoes also have their own theme song. Therefore, I have appeased the potato gods. They're on my side. <laughs> nice. I'll tell you what I did one time, and I only did it once because it scared the shit out of me. I was, fuck, I don't know. 15 or 16 years old and had a fucking potato cannon. And we took a tennis ball and jammed in that son of a bitch, but not until after we doused it in lighter fluid. Ah. 
flaming balls. Hot balls. Set that thing off, and that son of a bitch lit on fire, of course, as it come out. And that, yep. and that fucking flaming projectile ended up in the neighbor's yard about 10 houses down and set his fucking grass on fire. I'll tell you what, I got an ass whooping over that one. I never fucking forgot. I bet you did. I bet you couldn't sit down for a week. <laughs> right? Even though me and all my buddies fucking hauled ass down there and got the, you know, <laughs> fucking made sure nothing. Yeah, everything down. was already done. Yeah, yeah. See, you and I grew up in the era of if you cut up and the neighbor caught you, he had the right to whoop your ass. Then Dang, send you back you, to your uh, pod and many get many defaults get to get on here. <laughs> I do? What kind of def? What, are you trying to get in the live, JB? Come on in there, JB. It's always good to talk to you, brother. Shouldn't be a bunch of shit on. I think that's what he's saying. It's giving him shit trying to get on. Never had an issue getting on. A At least a fucking cream. mod, even. Speaking of which, I don't have my blue wrench anymore. You don't? Nope. I am. You went I am... over this last week. A couple of put something in the type something in the comments off so I can fix it. We went over this last week. ASO. And was it Dean? A couple of them had lost their fucking mods too for some reason. And I never and changed that. I know. And uh, because I lost mine once before and you gave it back to me. And I just I don't know why in the hell have... YouTube would do that. And this is the only one that it does. Why the hell can't JB get on? I have changed absolutely nothing with this channel. Evan says, I got to go. I'm still at work. Time to vacuum. Can't hear anything then. Will you take care, brother man? Bye, Evans Mopar. <laughs> take care of my Cordobas. <laughs> <laughs> that triple black one would be cool. Vacuuming six, Scott. My aunt had a burgundy with gold trim and medallions, um, Cordoba, when I was a little kid. With fine Corinthian leather. Shoe good JB Weld. <laughs> I wonder why the hell JB can't get on. I give up on getting on. I'm, I'm sorry you can't get it on, JB. That's fucked up. That is fucked up. I don't even know what the hell settings I would have to change. JB didn't want to hang out with us anyway. Yeah. And he's right now going, God damn it, I do. <laughs> they won't let That's me on. Uh, hey, trash truck seems pretty damn rowdy with those uh, 410 gears. Try it again, JB. I just, or I guess YouTube or Facebook are recording on. Or am I just hogging all the good stuff? It's all my fault. Try it again, JB. I just turned the authentication shit off. But unfortunately, I can't ban people if that's turned off, it says. Require all your guests to authenticate with YouTube or Facebook. This is required if you want the ability to ban guests. That's the only fucking setting I could think about. It could, yeah, it's all StreamYard shit, other uh, shit that I don't have control of otherwise. says here try this jb 
supposed to make it easy for you, not so fucking hard, right? Yeah, it shouldn't be an issue. I don't know why I'd be screwing with them. That pisses me off, actually. Well spoken by our Kiwi brother. I like it when JB hangs out. Him and Large are fucking funny. Yes, they are. I can't wait to actually, like, well, you too, you know, at no name, be able to sit down with my friends that I have a beer with all the time and I actually have a real beer and actually talk to you face to face. That's going to be great. It still ain't working for him. Damn, I, I turned off the authentication shit. At least I think I did. I unchecked it and that fucking thing still won't let him in. Damn, screw this getting in crap. What the fuck? He's been on my lives before. Many times. Well, remember... I will try one more day. time, he said. Remember back in the day when Nightbot was pushing me around? That was a whole... Oh, shit. Baby. Yeah, he I had the to Blue put Red. Nightbot's ass in check. Oh, man. Fuck, remember the damn Nightbot banned Tim Windsor, of all people, remember? Yes, that happened around the same time it was muscling me around it, banned Tim Wind. Yeah. Yeah. I think that between those two things, I think that was the whole reason why you told Nightbot to kick rocks. Oh, I still use it. The deplorable. Hey, fucker. Hey, you you me. I finally got there. What the hell was it doing to you, bro? I know it just kept, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, but I finally got there. That's right. Because you told me you going to give a good old boy country boy ass whooping. I can't stay long because, you know, I'm drunk and, you know, all this kind of shit. Well, that's all you are, that old drunkard on fucking YouTube, if you listen to the trolls. <laughs> Don't you do. Well, Fuck them exactly. trolls. Oh, God. I like that text I sent you the other day. I got plenty of cactus around here that could find a good home <laughs> in their asses. Exactly. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, these guys crack me the hell up. Man. All right, knock yourself out. Uh, I've just been playing with this little 2.8, man, for like two or three years. And I'm like, screw you guys. Watch what it does. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? If they don't like it, they don't got to fucking watch it. There's plenty of other exactly. people that will. How does that 2.8 like that 410 gear? Oh, that 2.8 likes that 410. I seen I, that. that I seen does. that big stinky fucking burnout short you did with it. Was that a oh. short or a long format video? I don't remember, but well, I saw that big old a, burnout. There's a long form in there. We're just... We hit it like five or six times and just let it do what it had to do. Right. And then Laura's done a little short for me. And I'm like, ah, fuck the short, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dean but says, I mean, you you seem perfectly slobber to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Slobber. But I played with this little truck for... That little engine there itself, I know five years. And everything I bought for, even the intake from Elderbrock, the freaking cam from Comp, everything said 14 gears, 14 gears. Right. And I, I didn't have the money to do that shit. So right. I was like, hey, we'll just build it and throw it in there. And then right. I finally, um, that 14 rear end I found was 100. They wanted 150. I give them 125. I was like, hell, this is a whole lot of regear the damn thing, right? Yep. Just did slap you another the whole one. axle, or did you actually change the gear set? Oh, no. I just changed, changed the whole axle. Rear end. Smart. That's okay. the way to do it. Well, he went from a seven and a half to an eight and a half, too. So it's a beefier rear. Okay. No, see, this uh, when I called or I texted you the other day, it's a 
both of them are seven and a half. But oh, okay. The seven and a half, yeah, the seven and a half that's in it now, dude, the axle shafts in that thing is like that. They're beefier axles. Yeah, not like the ones that come out of it was like that. <laughs> so you yeah. went like okay. from a 28 spline to a 31 or something. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just, I just sit back and laugh. I, I, I remember these days, my granddad and stuff like that. Man, I used to play around with all these big horsepower cars. And, dude, you can take a little bitty freaking engine and do the exact same thing. Yep. And people don't get that shit. And I'm like, dude, you just spin. Never mind. <laughs> just whatever. Well, Look at the look at how English or how uh, European cars are. They're usually small bore and large stroke, and they've got to spin the bejesus out of them to get the power out of them. Yep. And you got yeah. the big old big cubic inch short stroke V8s where they never break a sweat running on right. all that torque and slow moving engine. So there's two uh, theories of thought. Yeah, you can take that little motor and get the power out of it. You strangle it, but you always got to strangle it. Just hey, Devil Brian the says, hey, there's I that know. guy that don't like me. Yeah. Oh, bullshit. <laughs> Brian's always <laughs> saying that crap. <laughs> Lars. I oh, shit. What, JB's you, here. Yeah. Dustin, you was there. You seen what I done, right? You seen all the burnout crap, right? Yep. We never, we never broke thirty five hundred RPM. I told Lars when they got in that truck and he was going to burn it out. I said, "All right, don't get over thirty five hundred RPM." That little blower in that thing don't really start cranking up to about four thousand RPMs, right? You know, and I'm like, we didn't even freaking touch the power. <laughs> oh, Lord, okay. yeah. So you could you're blowing the tires off of that thing without even tapping into the to, to the, the boost. boost. Holy yeah, uh, wow. We're just, yeah, we're just on the motor <laughs> or the engine. Wow. I think we have an animal on our hands. I think that some bitch is gonna really come to life. And see, that's why all that shit wants that deeper gear, because a deeper gear is gonna get the RPM up. Right. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Everything I bought, the can, even when I bought the intake from Elderbrock, it said 410 required. And then when I bought the can and stuff from uh, some, not Summit, but uh, Comp. Comp. Comp it, it, it said the same thing. 410 gears required. Right. And Last year, man, we just threw it in there. This year, I was like, we're going to find a 14, and we're going to stick it under it. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, it's got a lot of duration. That cam's got a lot of duration. That's why it needs – that's why it's got the higher RPM band, higher power band. So, hey, I'm ready to play with Tony. Let's see what Tony's got this year. <laughs> <laughs> I find track and you guys all out. I'm yeah. gonna get buck. I'm gonna get buck. You're, You're gonna, gonna get buck. Speaking of uh, of earlier, we were talking about Speedmaster copying parts. I had oh, uh, yeah. I was kicking around the idea of talking to you, Tony, about having you like do a full on copy and make me Tony tracks out of your Cal tracks. And uh oh Old Cope says, why don't you just buy a set? And I actually looked him up and yeah, I'll just buy a set. Yeah, the Caltrax aren't that expensive. They're no, not anymore. Bucks. They used to be insanely priced, but now they're reasonable. Yeah, they're only like 400 bucks. I exactly hell, time I get my if if I if I do go with the split monolith from Caltrack from Calvert and the Caltrax, that's still only like eleven hundred bucks. Okay. For the Springs and for the springs and the fucking Caltrax. Right. The Caltrax alone. I'll spend more problem. money on the goddamn shocks than I will on the springs and, and Caltrax. Well, damn, I've been talking to old man in the shop. He goes, let me show you how to build a set of Caltrax. Yeah. 
Good. And he's, I mean, honestly, he's, I ain't sharing information, but he's giving me some good info on locking that little. Mark's a sharp dude. He knows how to get shit done. I mean, other, than, <laughs> other than he lives in the state of Ohio, I think he's a straight up dude. No, nah, he's man uh, in the shop. I thought he was in Florida. No, he's no, he's, in, uh, he's in North Carolina. Old man in the shop, bought not built. Mark, right? Yeah, he's he's yeah. in North Carolina. Oh. Or built I'm not sorry. bought. I said that backwards. I'm thinking See, of talk, another. I'm thinking of another talk, shop. Let sorry. JB talk, Doug. Yeah, I talk to these guys all the time, and I called him up the other day after he's seen the video and stuff. He goes, "Damn, that thing woke up, didn't it?" I said, yep, it did, sir. He goes, I said, now I got to figure out how to get on here. He goes, let me explain how to make that happen. You know, he's talking, cut this off, cut that off. And I said, well, I don't know if I want to do that. He goes, all right, your last choice is this right here. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to divulge that information. <laughs> but trust me. I got something you assholes done it known them nationals. <laughs> uh, just saying. Not ugly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Remember that, JB, when we were yeah, all doing we that? Wendy and Don were doing it. We go, wait a minute. Hell, I don't remember like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me. Lars remembers. Y'all. He's laughing his ass off. I love all y'all to death, but I have a goal in life. Is the little two point eight I got out there? I have spent many years building, and I'm gonna beat a freaking big ball. You watch me. <laughs> you watch and see. It's doable. And I'm going to beat Buck. I've that seen four hell, five. His ass ain't got a chance. I had a, I had a fucking four-cylinder Volkswagen that used to fucking whoop up on big blocks. So, yeah, you can do it. It can be done. So, air cool? <laughs> not all that hard. You, hell, you've already got the hard part done. You've got the fucking blower. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you you're you're laying down the chooch for sure. Now you gotta make a hook. The easiest Not way the easiest Not way to get more power out of a little engine is to stuff two atmospheres in that son of a bitch. Basically, now you've got two engines. Okay. What was it I watched? Uh y'all remember when it was a uh, uh gas monkey garage? Yeah. Oh yeah, Richard Rollins. Yeah. Yeah, and they had that one guy. I can't remember. It had the long bearded guy like Lars. Aaron Kaufman. Aaron. Yeah. He goes. Yes. Well, the best thing for this place. Can't believe I draw that out that fast. Is I can ratio. because you remember the history. <laughs> yeah. He was like, if you ain't got displacement gears, there you go. <laughs> and he, Goes in and explaining all that shit. So like, hell, no replacement for displacement. Yeah, uh, I'm just playing around with this shit, guys. Y'all just never mind. You know, we're all just doing this shit to have fun yeah. anyway. And if yep. somebody don't like it, change the fucking channel. Yep. Yeah. If I had, I mean, if I was really in, in seriously into this, I damn sure we be wouldn't be playing with the two point eight. Right. You'd have a big block. Yeah. Eric's yeah. in the house. But if I can take a 2.8 and beat the hell out of you. Hey, ass. check out the guy <laughs> in Arizona. Who the hell is in Arizona? Destroyer and Tony. Ah, damn. Get out of there. Get. Move. <laughs> Just playing around. That's monkey. That stunky monkey. <laughs> that stunky monkey. Yep. Just like Brian says, yeah, if you don't like it, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Brian, Brian is another character. He 
he hit me up. Uh, I, I've been leaving, you know, thumbs up and stuff on his channel. <laughs> He's back in a, you know, damn, about damn time you like something I've done. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> He's always giving me shit. You just don't like me, do you? Well, hell, I don't know, man. I, I always comment on your shit. There ain't nothing not to like about Brian. He's just good. Exactly. Oh. Unfortunately, guys, me, me. my phone's dying. I got to go. Good night. Good night, Dougster. Hey, Thanks for hanging out. out not here. a problem. Take care, y'all. I'm going to shut her down about five ways. But yeah, Brian over at Dust Off and Roger, I don't know. He'd come up to me and say, You just don't like me. And I'm like, I don't, I, I don't think I've ever met anybody I don't like. <laughs> well, there's a few of them we don't like, but they earn well, it. Well, yeah, I like everybody, right? Until you give me a reason not reason to. Reason not to, exactly. But Brian over at Dust Devil, man, I, he's, he's on it. He's working his butt off to get it done. I, I I really do feel sorry that stuff didn't work out for him last year at No Name Nationals. Because well, I've seen that. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna go this year. Yeah, I, I, that thing's I, I gonna go like, like hell this year. Yeah, I would like to see that thing hit it right. <laughs> Oh, oh, he's, bringing, he's bringing us some shit this year. Hell, we all oh, man. are. I mean, honestly, we all are. I, like I said, man, I got to race buck with that 455 and 411 rear end. Oh, all right. Well, we're going to give it a shot. You know? <laughs> Mr. GoFundMe don't like <laughs> <laughs> You Damn. and I both know who he's talking about, JB. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, uh, don't worry. I promised one individual on here I would not get into that shit till after this event is over. But trust me, boys and girls, when this event's over, it's fair damn game. <laughs> 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 and it's gonna be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, you know, I can't drink a beer on camera, but this little fucker can sit there and show all his pot and shit. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? I can fucking drink <laughs> beer. You can drink beer too. Oh. oh. Everything's cool here. This is not cool. On that channel, on my channel, right? Where in the hell is my fucking camera getting? And I'm, I'm some kind of hillbilly, drunk fucker. Look, dude, I'm very happy to be a hillbilly. I grew up in the backwoods of Butler County, Kentucky. Loved it. Get out there, do some hunting. All that kind of crap. So call me a hillbilly all you want. Redneck. You know, redneck used to be a term of endearment. Now it is a term of you know, ugly shit. But, you know, sorry. <laughs> just, just wait. I am fixing the light into these assholes. Fun is fun. Fuck anyone who says anything. Yep. Absolutely. Fuzzy is better. Yeah, nobody wants to see my ugly ass anyways. What the hell is going on with this fucker? My bad, Tony. I didn't mean to be ugly. Oh, you ain't ugly. But fuck these assholes. <laughs> Yep, exactly. Bring it. Oh, his camera is fuzzy. Time to shave it. <laughs> and fuck LP94. <laughs> oh, 
Well, I was going to shut this fucker down at two hours, but we're at the three hour mark and I got to get up early in the morning. Anyway. All right. Knock yourself out, but still, fuck LP94. Fuzzy camera be damned. I'm, we had a good time tonight. I was like getting in here. We was, you know, doing shit to go to a car show tomorrow. All oh, right, on. You're going to a car show tomorrow? Yeah. Nice. Get some video. That's what I plan to do. <laughs> oh, Mars says, y'all have a good weekend. Yeah, that's right. Me and the LPs head down to see Mohawk. There's a oh, car yeah, show. He, a, a he was in here movie. earlier. Mohawk was and said he was going to a car show. So you're going with him. Yeah, we're going nice. to do a car show. He's going to do that. And then we're going to a, you know, meet and greet over somewhere. Cool. Sounds like a fun weekend. A lot more That's fun right. than hanging a new exhaust under a fucking freight liner. Oh, screw that. That's send me a muffler, tomorrow. asshole. <laughs> What's that? I said, send me a muffler, asshole. I'll hang that <laughs> under it. <laughs> yeah, well, we're putting a whole new from the turbo back on it. All new muffler, exhaust, the whole nine yards. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, one of them fancy business class ones. It's got a big headache rack and shit on. He hauls his living quarters horse trailer and shit with it. He's a roper, a friend of mine. But I don't want to keep you up, you know, doing your thing. Y'all just keep paying attention to what the hell I'm doing. And oh, we do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you some shit, man. Uh, so, you know, it'll all be what it is. Watch that some bitch. Watch that some bitch turn down. Turn out a low eight. Oh, uh, oh! John is telling me six is. I'm like, no, we don't want to go that fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Blow your mind if it did, though, wouldn't it? Uh, maybe. I think it'll do it, but I don't want to go that route. I just, I just want to have. I, I really want this thing to be street legal and just if a one in fucking little piece of shit Mustangs come up against it, just grab some shit, pull it back, and open up and hit a wow. <laughs> All right, that's so let's yep. go. <laughs> that's my goal. Be sure to properly install that piece of shit deaf system, Tony, or JB will call the EPA on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Lars. <laughs> fuck that deaf. Actually, that truck, uh, that truck uh, the only thing that one, I think that truck's an 06, so the only thing it's got is EGR, thankfully. It doesn't have to, it's got one of them Mercedes engines in it. All I know is I think I'm going to have to call that Tony this year because he's going to spin just as bad as I do. Don't yeah, don't bet on that. Don't count me out <laughs> yet. Like I said, I got the plan laid out. I just got to get the fucking funds to do it. Yeah, see, that's me. I've I, 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 I done the video the other day explaining I'm a man of little means. I have to do shit, you know. But don't worry, I will get there. <laughs> that being said, any of you guys want to see that truck go faster? Super chats are now available on this channel. Exactly. <laughs> if you ain't got time for that, man, just send some shit we can use, right? I know, right? Uh, like I said, I I think I, I I've, I've got the plan laid out, and I, and I honestly think I can accomplish it for a couple grand. So I think I. Can. Dude, that little that little truck of yours is. If you can get that thing planted, it's gonna be, it's gonna be something to reckon with. Well, I've got, I've picked up a set of slicks. They're twenty eight ten fives. I'm not going that route. Used ones, but I I need to. I need I I need to get something I can put on those twelve inch wheels. Now I want to I'm I'm, like a thirty one twelve two or something. But all I, I'm looking at. Well, like I said, I'm not sharing it over here, but I'll share it with you. I can text you. Yeah, you can text what, me or call me. 
what my idea is behind this thing. And you be going, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Don't need to bring your manhood into it, man of little beans. <laughs> what? What? He's fucking I'm, funny, too. I'm not. Are we talking tank? Man of little beans. Hey, dude, I just, the whole truck is a a junkyard truck. <laughs> Dust but, devil, you need little tires like mine. Well, I've got the wheels. I just need to get the tires. And I've actually got the tires picked out, but they're fucking 450 bucks a piece. Uh, I think see, more than more than tires, I need the damn suspension work done. You know. Yeah, I'm still waiting on Jason to give me new slapper bars. He said he'd build me i mean hell i get the suspension working it'll be light years better even with a 28 10 5 on it and you know if i if i go and get my well, 32 1350s or whatever underneath of it then i know it's gonna hook but the other thing too is i've only got 355 gears in it right now so the shorter tire could actually work to my advantage maybe i go with a 29 12 or something you know that 355 ain't bad well with that much power you know it, yeah. it works you know with a, a deeper gear would just exacerbate my traction yeah you, At this point, you know for it, for it to behave the way it does with that relatively tall gear in it on the drag strip, you know, it's that just shows the amount of I just work remember that last year, suspension man, you just doing. What's that? I said, I just remember last year, man, you just could not get that thing hooked yeah. up. My it just wasn't best, good. no, my best run was an 851 with 18 pounds of pressure in those tires. No, 16 pounds of pressure in those tires and foot brake in it in second gear. Foot brake launch in second gear, you know, and I got an 851 out of it and still spun the tires down the track. So, you know, I know that son of a bitch has got mid sevens in it easy. Yeah. You know, it's that's, you know, that's why I got different seats for it. I, I, they showed up today. There'll be a video coming up putting them in. So it's so official. Can... It's official right now. I'm calling Tony's Hot Rod app. Fucking hey. I'll drag your <laughs> ass down the track. Let's see what he does against a 2.8. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell. Oh, shit. Yep. Dust Devil Brian says I'm going ladder bar next year. Yeah. See, ladder bar is a good way to go. The rear end under the trash truck right now, somebody has some welded traction bars to it because they come out of a, a, a little blazer race truck. So oh, the last 10 not, blazer? Like yours. Yeah. yeah. Only all and, raced out. Yeah, and they had it welded on to the rear end and stuff, and they cut all that stuff out before they sold it to me. So yeah, I I I I get what's going on. Yeah. But yeah. No, I think I, at this point my suspension's just too stiff. It's not allowing itself to work, you know, with the yeah, transfer. Loosen it up. Yeah. Yep. I'm sorry. Never mind. I'll be a son of a bitch. Hey, you beat Barrows. Barrows last week <laughs> swore to be damned. He was going to be my first super chat. <laughs> I love you, Lars. Thanks, brother. Fuck Appreciate Lars. Appreciate the hell out of that. <laughs> Fuck Lars. Because America. <laughs> hell yes. So y'all think we're good friends, but no, no, no. <laughs> and all JB can do is give you the bird. Yeah. <laughs> what was that fucking video that Lars put out? Fuck you, fuck you, or something. That's yeah. just, it was a short. I just remember, I'm trying to remember the song. It was fuck you, this. Lars, yeah. Lars is looking, 
I, I'm telling you, was that the one I sent you with the guy? All Maybe. Day? No, he <laughs> actually put a short. He posted a short on YouTube, and it was, uh, uh, damn it, I can't remember the damn song, but I laughed my ass off at it. It was oh. something fuck you. But I I really enjoy the YouTube shit. Uh, I've tried the Facebook crap. <laughs> that right? Sorry, might be getting out of control, but fuck a bunch of damn Facebook. Yeah, Facebook sucks uh, ass. I I just for everybody that's watching, I do contact Tony quite a bit. And talk to him. I do contact John Wilburn quite a bit. I, I contact quite a few people. Uh, just, you know, getting everybody's idea of what I'm doing. And that's what this community is about. And I'd be damned if y'all going to beat my ass this year. Just let you know. <laughs> but you know what? Win, lose, or draw, when it's all over, we're gonna sit around a campfire and drink a cold beer. Exactly. I'm gonna. Hey, you want a beer? <laughs> yep. Fucking a. <laughs> uh, it's all in fun. You know, and that's what. It, that's exactly what it is. It's all in fun. Yeah. You know, I'm just. I'm just hoping this year to maybe be able to get the suspension done and i just got kicked in the nuts with another thing i gotta oh, deal with today you know money wise but i'm with you i hit uh, i got hit with the freaking income tax like two oh, days ago yeah <laughs> like, fuck holy biden. shit fuck <laughs> biden and his taxes too yeah just write the check directly to the president of ukraine yeah but friggin uh Hoping to get be able to get that suspension work done and maybe get a couple of test hits at the track down here before I go. Yes, yeah, too. Me and Lars is talking about the same thing, but the problem is with the little red truck. I haven't transferred it. I would like to get it transferred. That's seventy bucks, and then another hundred and twenty-five to get it licensed. So. You know, you're talking two hundred dollars, and I don't have right. that money right now. And if I can get that done, hell, I'll drive it to No Name Nationals. I'll drive it to the racetrack. You know, you guys got a track relatively local to you, don't you? Yeah, it's like maybe fifteen miles, maybe yeah. maybe fifteen miles. Yeah, so yeah, so you know, you'd still have to trailer the fucking truck if you can't get tags on it. Well. I got the title and everything. I just never, when I bought it, I just never. Never swapped it's been it over. Right here, yeah, it's been sitting right here like four years. And then I finally decided. Never mind. I you got to watch the video. I never intended on. I first, When I first bought it, I intended on making a daily driver. And then. The no name national stuff come up, and I'm like, I think I'm gonna race this. All right now, I got this 2.8 built out the ass. Wait a minute, I got this blower sitting over here. <laughs> What's to get some bitch on? <laughs> right? And I just, I, I never even tried to license it. Yeah. Well, so now you just got to make like Irish J and go down to give the state all your fucking money. And if you're lucky, they'll give you a license plate for it. Exactly. <laughs> did you see his video he did today? <laughs> he, took, he took the car out and drove it down and bought the license for his semi. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, I know about what he spent. I mean, fuck, mine was always 2000 a year. But yeah, I mean... If I had, well, I'm waiting on Shaster to Shaster to buy him a trailer. If he'll buy him a trailer, he can just haul me where I need to go. <laughs> I was so fucking pissed. I thought I'd found me a trailer. Last weekend, Saturday or Sunday morning, 
I had to do a brake job on a dump truck. And I was on Facebook Marketplace in the morning before I went and got the dump truck. And there was a goddamn brand damn. I mean, it was, it was like a 2018, but it looked like brand new. 20 foot fucking car hauler. Dude wanted twenty five hundred dollars for the son of a bitch. Shit, I'll be older. I took this out, <laughs> laid it on the desk, and took a picture of it. Yeah, I'm coming to get it. And I sent it to him. I said, "I got to finish this brake job on this truck," and he's a couple hours away from me where I, where I live. But I was going to finish the brake job on the truck and go get it. He said, "Well, there's a lot of interest in it." I sent him the picture of the stack of fucking cash. Yeah, I got I, you. I wasn't full of shit. Son of a bitch sold the goddamn trailer to somebody else. Oh, I was pissed. At least I, I didn't drive you. all the way over there. But, man, I'd have really been pissed. I probably would have beat his ass. <laughs> I'll tell you one that made out like a big dog was uh, Buck. Right? He got that aluminum trailer. It's tilt trailer. Oh, he came over last year, man. Just walked up on the back of it and pulled his car on. What the hell are you doing, man? Yeah. <laughs> last year, oh, you was, those are nice year, fucking trailers. Yeah, last year you was fucking using a U-Haul. This year, <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I was so. using last year is a fucking U-Haul. And he just looked at me and goes, "Hell." I paid fourteen hundred dollars for that trailer last year. I bought this thing for like nine thousand. I mean, not what do you say, twelve hundred dollars. He said, "It's good. I said, hell, you done good, man." <laughs> hey, yeah, them aluminum trailers—they're going for like seven grand around here, especially yeah. the tilt ones. And then I don't know if y'all been watching him do that Cuda stuff, but dude. I, I, I have utmost respect for yeah. him. He's put a lot he's, of work in. Yeah. He's he got a long way to go, but he's put a lot of work into that little car. Yeah, he makes it right. Yep. Uh, he told me the other day, he probably, like I said earlier, he probably ain't bringing that, he'll bring the buck, that kind of stuff. He said, maybe next year I'll get that one down there. I, I, I'll get it, you know. See, Buck, Buck's like me. He in that, you know, and a lot of us guys, he does it right and he takes his time. And if it gets done, it gets done, or it'll get done when it gets done, but it's damn sure gonna be right. And he does good right. work. Yeah. You know, he ain't cutting corners on the damn thing. But I'm gonna kick it 455's ass. You just watch me. That buck's gonna be a fast son of a bitch with that 455. <laughs> yeah. He, I told him when he first messed with that thing, I said, I need a video of your reaction. Just put a camera up in front of your face and fire on it and let's see what you reaction is. Lars said, I'm sure Tony spent on you all last year. You could damn near buy one. It was almost yeah. 700 fucking dollars rent that damn u-haul for that week six something if i remember right yeah that was that's what i said i ain't renting a motherfucking trailer again this year i'm gonna find one lost jb but yeah, me and Laura's been working our ass off on this little ST. And I'm a labor I'm, I'm, of love, ain't it? Yeah. But I'm serious, man. I, I I know it's a piece of shit. I know it's a piece of junk. But no, it ain't. Take a 2.8 and do what we done with it. Let's see how y'all like that shit when we show up. It ain't That's no piece of shit. It might have been a piece of shit at one time, but it ain't now. Uh, well, it wasn't until Lars started messing with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Dean 
says you need tires like that because you got more power. Yeah, that's no shit. Taking a piss. I'll get it. Uh, but I want everybody, I, I, I'm going to put a video out in the next day or so. Uh, I'm done putting videos up of the S10. Uh, I want that thing just to go away for four or five weeks until we get it the way we want it. Yep. And then bring it back and go, all right, assholes. <laughs> right. Here you go. Well, you did put out that one video. Or did you put, or no, you, maybe you told me something on the phone. I don't remember. Yeah. Did, or did I, you, I, I, I'm, you know, I, I, never mind. Never mind. Yeah. But I'm telling we know you, what we know it. We, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. There's no sense of putting more stuff out on it. Just it, let's just finish it up and get it done, and then see what everybody has to say about it. Which will be, that's a piece of shit. Is it? You know. But well, just remember, everybody that calls it a piece of shit, what the fuck are they driving? Eh, that's right, Tony. What are you driving? Piece of shit. <laughs> oh my god it don't matter what i'm driving because i didn't call it a piece of shit oh my god that's, yeah that's there what i always I, I get a kick out of you know somebody wants to talk shit on your ride but you know what the <laughs> fuck they got yeah so goddamn uh, great but it's all good it's all yep freaking great Y'all knock yourself out. I'll tell you what, right now, you will not find a 2.8 in the hemisphere I live in that's got the same shit going on that I do. Nope. So, y'all knock yourself out. <laughs> Dean says, unless you're using leaders instead of giving hints to placement, then we cannot be friends. I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. Yeah. If I want to Can't leave, we all buy just... a fucking bottle of 7-Up. Yeah, can't we all just get along? <laughs> can we all just... I, I disagree with you, but hey, we can get along. Now nah, you sorry son of a bitch. Shit, ain't no such thing. That's funny. All right, you guys. I'm, I'm going to... Uh-oh, what's Lars saying? Drinking game, take a shot every time somebody says 2.8. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, Seems Lars knows. Dance, I draw the line. Lars has been under the wheel of that thing. He knows. I've seen the video. This fucking thing's come a long way. Huh. And we it's all been in the right direction. And that's just my two cents. But We've still got two years to go. This year is what I've done so far. Next year, porting, polishing, and transmission work. So that's three years. I figured four years, this thing might do what I want it to. You know, you and I both know these kind of these sorts of projects are never done, ever. But I want to say, I want to say right now because I know these. Freaking people are watching. Fuck y'all people. Kiss my fucking ass. I will get even with y'all's ass. And bring your car and let's see what happens. Yeah. There you, you go. I think you got something better. Bring that some bitch out and I'll drag your ass down the track. Uh, all right. I'm done. Yeah. Now, finish it up, Tony. <laughs> It's been fun. I'm glad you stopped in, brother. We had oh. a good show tonight. 
dude, I'm I, I'm sorry I missed last Friday, but we was putting that rear end under, you know. And I'm like, fuck no, this is more important than anything. Well, you're right, it is. Yeah, I get it. I I need no apology expected, man. You're good. But you know you're always welcome on these shows, and bring you bring fun to it. So I invite you. Yeah, Lars went home early because. Lars, a, well, he might be at home, but he's still talking shit. Tell us how you really feel, you dang shoe goo <laughs> sniffer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lars is a pussy. I don't well, give a damn what he say. <laughs> I'd be willing to bet. I'd be willing to bet you'd rather be a shoe goo sniffer than a fucking window licker. <laughs> uh, damn, that damn tank liquor. <laughs> Not when you multiply well, yeah, U.S. Please. units by 16.387 every time you open your gob. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Tony, you, think, you know, go ahead and finish your thing up. I just, I, I, I'm glad to be a part of it, you know. Anytime. Anything. You know what happened last time we done this? We got called everything but a white boy. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And by <laughs> probably the biggest piece of shit on fucking YouTube. So, I mean, that, yeah. you know, that really hurt my fucking feelings. Yeah. Y'all right. just wait. I'm, I'm fixing to get into this shit. I promise one certain person I wouldn't do it till after the No Name National. But once that No Name National shit is over, y'all better sit back and enjoy what I'm fixing to do. Show. Get some fucking popcorn because it's going to be good. <laughs> Just sit back, relax. Yep. All right, you guys. I appreciate everybody hanging out. Appreciate the mods for doing what they do. And with that, I'm going to shut her down. And we'll see you all the same time next weekend. All right. Tony, we'll be here. Take care, brother. You too, man. I'm out.